this episode. Of, oh, for fuck's sakes. What? Now go. Fingered? This episode of Designers of the Worst is brought to you by Spicy Mini Pumpkins. For those chilly autumn nights, reach for a spicy mini pumpkin. Keep your body toasty, hot for the evening. Crunchy and sweet to start. No, wait. These are habanero preppers. I've made a huge mistake. Let's start the show. everyone, welcome back to Designers Are the Worst, your new least favorite show about an exclusively visual medium. Cleverly brought to you... Oh, pause. I should have had this up. Cleverly brought to you <laughs> in an audio format. Yeah. What have you done to your cone? Nothing. No? Turn around. Yeah. It's not a real tattoo. Mebs, mebs, unacceptable. There you go. <laughs> And if you know what movie that is, then you, too, lived at the end of a long road and had no children around and um, have me- memorized most of that movie. That was um, an era where SNL just made any movie. It's yeah. Pat, man. Any idea? <laughs> yeah. It's Pat and Stuart Saves His Family. That was a piece of trash. But, uh, but Coneheads is actually pretty funny. Oh, Coneheads is great. Yeah. It's got Chris <laughs> Farley. My- oh, David yeah, Spade. I, my mother's the only other woman I've ever seen take a sandwich like that. That's gold. <laughs> <laughs> what was the uh, the cat? Was it Toonses? Toonses is a driving yeah. cat. Yeah. They never made a movie of, out of that, but I suppose they didn't. That's that's what about was? as thin of a premise as you can get. They had one where they had like Murphy Brown on <laughs> or Candace Bergen, and then she had a dog named Flippy that did tricks, and it was getting all the attention. So Toonses went driving and then ran Flippy the fuck over on the middle of the road. It always ended yeah. with. There's no interruption. You listen to it wrong. <laughs> and uh, yeah, today um, we're we're firing the the sound guy, right? Yep, the, the roadie. Yep, as they call them in the hey, podcast world. Speaking of the roadie, we were just talking about the righteous gemstones and Danny McBride. He w- starred in the video "The Roadie" for Tenacious D. Oh yeah, yeah. I actually, on the topic of roadies, had a sandwich called the Roadie Hoagie today. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, shit. It's full circle. Was yeah, it yeah. filled with keys and no, duct tape? Just a weird name, I guess. <laughs> Some sort of uh, Italian style sandwich with olives and peppers and cheese. That'll work. <laughs> black peppers or green? Or, wait, hold on. Wait. Green olives. Fuck, <laughs> black peppers? Yeah. What are those? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just obsessed with peppers right now. Some sort of pepper. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> too sure. Fuck. Yeah. So, um,. <laughs> The voice you heard that is not uh, me or Marcus. That is our guest today, and I'm super stoked to have Brian Carr here. He's a, a tattoo artist, aficionado, real good artist guy with tattoos. Um, he he works out of a shop called Government Street Tattoos here in Victoria. Um, the reason I really wanted to have Brian on is I've always wanted to do a tattoo episode mm-hmm. of the show, and I think we're on 22 now, episode 22. It's probably mm-hmm. 90 hours of content. Mm-hmm. Um, but I really wanted to have somebody younger in the tattoo game uh, who hasn't seen it all, but is also has like a, like a special ability. And when I was shopping around for artists in town to buy my lady um, an anniversary gift and got the tattoo done, um, Brian did a peacock on Ryan's arm. I saw Brian's style and it had this like, it's going to sound so dumb. It has has like this grace to it. It's like this, like it flows really well. There's yeah, like, yeah, that was that was dumb. Yeah, it was stupid, but <laughs> no, but I get I it. I never claimed to be not that. So um, and you can see it because you are a designer. Uh, yes, I'm a computer man. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I've always wanted to to do a tattoo <laughs> episode. And we're doing that today. Uh, we'll get that t- to all of that. I got a bunch of questions because I've in my head tattooing is like the purest form of graphic design it's sure. it's like a it's like what do you want here it is here's a pile of cash and that's it so we'll 
we'll get into that later um, to see if you can shatter all my dreams, <laughs> if, if that's perfect. But we'll also try and horrify you with uh, with tales of our of our design projects and all that, and how. Hopefully, when you're done this, you'll feel good about going to work on tomorrow. <laughs> and any you know, yeah. any interesting yeah, yeah, tattoo stories to, as well. Oh yeah, I got a yeah, I got a bunch of questions because I'm. Sure. I mean, mine are all birthmarks, but it's kind of <laughs> awkward. <They're laughs> I can tell you that they're super detailed. That's your asshole. It's not a birthmark. <laughs> it's functional. <laughs> no, I swear to God. Um. So yeah. So thank you, Brian, for showing up. Thanks for um, having me. Yeah. 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 Hopefully, you enjoy this, but you're here already. Yeah. So what are you gonna do? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, and <laughs> also, already, so. yeah, yeah, we're it's gonna get real, real slippery in here. <laughs> um, I wanted to commend Brian because he's the only person I've ever seen that has a <laughs> David Putty tattoo. Oh yeah, <laughs> the, the eight ball jacket. You got a problem? You talk to the eight ball. <laughs> oh, right. yeah. So, so Brian was was giving me um, giving me a tattoo on my forearm. Uh, after I saw how well my my ladies came out, I was like, shit, I, I really want to get my next one. I, I want to get it through Brian. I, I have another one coming up too, so awesome. yeah, it should be a good one. Cool. Um, but but yeah, we, um, Brian was working on me, and uh, he's wearing shorts, and I was just sitting there getting my arm done, and I looked down, and it's like, that looks really familiar, and it's David Putty <laughs> going like that, and thumbs behind the head. <laughs> oh, here it comes. Well, just for the <laughs> hot stuff. I haven't seen it, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So everyone yeah. in the <laughs> internet <laughs> <can go> <laughs> Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, we should have got Arby's now that I think about it. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> thank you, for, Brian, for being here. And uh, and yeah, so um, first what I wanted to get in, uh, besides the Coneheads clip, or, or we'll just catch up. All right. <laughs> Fuck. Sorry, I no, it's all good. Run off my ass today. Even though I left work at three thirty, <laughs> and I just went home and like sat there with everybody. I feel like I'm bu- I've been busy and I'd have an excuse where I, I didn't do shit. Well, you could have made it up. You could have said I got out of here late and I got home to chaos. The house was on fire. I had to murder somebody on the way to the house, and then I had it's to true. come here while preparing for it. <laughs> or you I could have. I could. Or I could just start. Thinking, speaking, and acting normally, and it should go well. <laughs> so, too easy. So, um, so bring up my sheet. So, <laughs> fuck, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> it's and not. Brought up it's a, not a case of uh, being tired this time. No, no, it's just being stupid. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Um, one thing. I wanted to bring up, and Brian, you may, you, it, it, it's, it's probably going to be quite different for you, um, but I just hit, we just launched a project. It was a company that I named and I branded and I did all the labels for and I did all this art for, and then I planned, designed, and built the website as well, just because mm-hmm. we were kind of short staffed. Yeah, I don't believe that. Short, it's true. Short staffed or? <laughs> or control freak. There you go. Hey, both actually. <laughs> it started off as, control freak and then it went into short staff and everyone's like all right you can just do it we don't have enough people i went yay <laughs> but one thing that i hit i mean i've been doing i've been designing for like 20 years now and one thing that i notice a lot of people don't do is celebrate victories like when we launched this this big thing like i did like 98% of it and it was a huge thing um, and then it just goes up and within, within the company, and it's not just this company, it's, it's, it's every company that I've worked with or for or whatever. It's just like, Oh, cool. All right. So did you get that email from, from like, uh, from what's the name? Superman <laughs> saying like, Doug. it's like, Hey, uh, yeah, we get, we need an edit over here on another project. Like there's never, there's never the moment of like, Wow, all that was for something, sure. and now we're going to celebrate. Like at least acknowledge it internally that something got completed. It's not even like, wow, look how good it is. It's like when anything gets done, there should be some form of celebration. Yeah, or at least a period between accepting that and the next topic. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like <clears throat> if they say, Matt, you've earned, you know, two hours in a quiet room, I'd be like, sweet. I'll go there and I'll put my head <laughs> down earned, and I'll just like... You've earned nap time. Yeah, hey. I would take a... I would heartily take a nap time. Sure. We don't uh, We do not do that as much as we should either. It's like... It in, sucks. From a six-month to a year-long project and as soon as it launches, you're like, all right, I got to get on to the next thing. And you're mm. like, no, I should really 
stop working and just go out and have some fun. Go to the arcade. Yeah. And spend 20 bucks for a couple hours. <laughs> yeah. It's like, but you don't do that. But then you think, should we be celebrating? Yeah. It's like, but if a if a construction worker or a carpenter finishes a house, does he like, I'm taking the evening yeah. off. I built a house. You walk by a construction site on like a Friday afternoon and those fuckers are getting high. They're high-fiving. They're yelling at ladies. They're having they're, a hoot and a holler. They're having nail gun fights. Yeah, exactly. But that would be great, like in Lethal Weapon 2. <laughs> One guy had a nail gun. <laughs> the other guy got shot with a nail gun. Um, but the the inability to just like stop, like not immediately everyone put their headphones back on and keep working or whatever, it, it always kind of bums me out. And I, I still expect it to happen, but it never sure. does. But with tattooing, it's, it's a one-on-one thing. Like, <clears throat> I mean, yeah, I could like, see, depending on where you work, like fortunately working at Government Street, we're a very tight knit kind of group of tattooers. So, yeah. you know, maybe not on every job, but quite often, at least every day, someone there is doing something, whether it, you know, the whole process of someone walking in and it being done took 10 minutes or yeah. it is something maybe with the same kind of, you know, lead up like a big project, like a sleeve or a back that might've been a couple of years. And, you know, it, I could see those types of sort of, you know, times where you're, you know, look, check this out, not even needing a bunch of celebration or whatever, but yeah. we do tend to at least sort of acknowledge to a degree, especially when it's like, you know, we do one that we're pretty happy with. We'll send it around the shop, you know, and be like, yeah. Hey, you want to show my buddies, you know? And it's, yeah. it is pretty fleeting, you know, it's like, Oh cool. You know? And then it's just like, I guess, especially sometimes for us, which is probably the same for you guys as well. It's like five minutes later, you're just doing something completely different, I guess. Yeah. And it's just like, that's over, you know? Yeah. But it, but, but, but also, like, depending on the tattoo shop, and mm-hmm. I definitely get the vibe in, in Government Street and, and a, f- a, f- a few more of the years where, like, when the crew is super cool with each other, mm-hmm. the whole time it kind of feels like, not like a celebration, but like, it's a, the, like, the vibe is good, like, yeah. like, you know, when it's, it's being worked on and the other artists, you know, they finish their job and they come over and check out what's going on on you. Sure. And, the, you know, like... You and you and one of the other artists will talk about it and like joke around and stuff and like mm-hmm. like as a client like you feel like stoked like oh like that guy thinks it's cool too like like I'm almost I forty you, but yeah. but when like a tattoo guy is like hey I like your tattoo I'll be like oh cool oh, oh yeah it's thank like you sir for sure yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it's so stupid but but Man child thank yeah, you yeah yeah exactly um, but the um, yeah I know <clears throat> but that would also speak to the shop too because there's oh yeah. Yeah. Like there's other shops that just like people come in and they do their time. Like that's their space. Oh, definitely. And then yeah. they're like, that's all their participation there. And then they're gone. Sure. Yeah. Definitely. Just like in any job, it's more the person I think that would appreciate different opportunities more. And yeah. And there's a lot of people, you know, I think from the outside looking in, you'd expect, you know, most people seem pretty psyched on the idea of doing them or whatever. But yeah. there's just as many as any other job of people doing it that are just there to get paid and yeah. not having a great time. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Fortunately, we don't have to really deal with that. You know, the uh, yeah the group of guys at the shops always awesome, and even when we have guests or whatever. And I think we've all just kind of come from places where that was the norm. Yeah. And it's just sort of filters out once you get to that shop or whatever. There's definitely other places like it, even in town, but it's fun to work at for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It just it's, well, like it looks like working with your friends and just yeah basically drawing shit all day, which would be. You pretty know, much a, yeah. about the best yeah definitely yeah, yeah even the even the low times are still pretty high you know it's yeah good. yeah but for those of you listening if you're about to finish a project or you know somebody that is finishing a project just make sure you like grab and be like hey let's go get a drink or like let's i don't know let's all go to that whatever that axe throwing place is around the corner which is pretty fun I went there once and sure. whatever. We, everyone had about 25 beer and they don't <laughs> yeah. care they're just like sign this so don't you, throw it at the, yeah. <laughs> this way yeah, exactly. So just celebrate the wins because yeah. they're way more losses. And uh, if you don't, then people are going to start looking around for other companies that might. Not that I'm saying that's what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm just saying <laughs> I've completed probably like 500 projects in my career. Mm-hmm. And the only times I've celebrated is when I've initiated it and it was my <laughs> own company. Yeah. And it was just like, we're done at noon today. Let's go out and have fun and do whatever. So, yeah. Is there is there a side of you that also thinks, like, to celebrate your own work is inflating your own ego? 
And that's why you might avoid it? No. Oh, oh no. Like I would dig it. Um, when I do a project, the amount of research and stuff I put into it, like it's like, I don't know how, how you feel about this, Brian or, or Marcus as well, but like I, I put so much time into it for the client before I even start designing that it never feels like mine. So mm-hmm. when a project launches, I'm like, that is exactly what they wanted and what they needed. And I'm stoked that they have it now because mm-hmm. if it was mine, it would be completely different. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't pick that name. I wouldn't pick those colors. I wouldn't do whatever. So I can't remember the last time a project went out where I felt like it was mine. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> what, I, what I want to be celebrating is fucking something got actually got done. We can bill for another check and all that work you put into it was worth it. Right. Cause it was, because it looks like it's going to succeed. It's funny because like uh, when for the majority of work that I do is all websites and stuff. And so it's like there's no disconnect between actually launching something on there and you don't feel like you're going to see it out in the wild. Yeah. But when you put out a physical thing, like I, I worked on some new packaging and when I see it in a grocery store, it's like I did that. It's like that's yeah. that's great. And then you, I feel connected to it differently than I do everything else because it's not right in front of me at any moment. I can just go to the site. Yeah. It's just out there sure. in the wild. You can might come across it. It's like, oh, that's a different feeling of like external yeah. celebration for it. Yeah, it's <clears throat> I get that as well. It's similar uh, with tattooing for sure, where you you're ultimately most things you're doing for the client, you know, but I yeah. mean, I guess there are things where I'll have designs kind of ready and someone will pick it, just want it the way it is. And yeah, I guess the way you were describing it or like for your jobs, you know, that would be maybe more mine, but at the end of the day, it's still, it's still gone. But well, yeah, know, it ended up being right for somebody else. That's, and that's like the biggest thing, whether it was something that they came to me with or just something that I had laying around that, yeah. that they just saw and it meant something or whatever for yeah. them or they just wanted it, you know? Yeah. Or, or but, you're out and about and you see a tattoo on somebody like, ah, oh, that's awesome. Fuck, I did that. Sure. Wait, <laughs> <laughs> I know that arm. <laughs> yeah, I had that a little while ago. Well, it was a few months ago at, I don't know, Max Milk or something in the lineup. And there was one that, the thing that really intrigued me so much was just I couldn't remember if I had done it when I was here or if <laughs> it was when I was back in Toronto because it was shortly after I moved. So I was yeah. like, "You'd be more." I would be more inclined to go talk to that person if it was Toronto. You know, if I could say for sure that it was when <laughs> it was in Toronto or something like that. But you know, they definitely do. I guess after being here for yeah. a little over a year now, start to see a few floating around here and there. Yeah, it is nice to see as long as they're well taken care of. I suppose. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The um, the few well. The, there's a bunch of projects I've done that are like physical things. And Mm -hmm. I always feel, yeah, like, like you guys saying, like I always feel happier walking by one of those than I would if a website came up. Cause as soon as a website comes up that like plan, design, built and did whatever, as soon as it's up, you start looking, okay, is this working? Is this working? Is this working at this screen size? Like when you see a tattoo or you see like, like I've done a bunch of beer labels or like you see like a product in a grocery store, it's fucking done. Mm. Yeah. It's like it can't do, not yeah. work. Even <laughs> it's got to work at least. Yeah. Even if it doesn't, yeah. it's but if you see something. a person, yeah, if you see someone and like they're missing an arm, like, Hey, what happened to your arm? It's like, Oh, that, that too, the tattoo gave me really fucked up my arm and it just fell off. You'd be like, Oh no, it's broken. Like <laughs> you, you don't have to go back and like reconfigure it, but it's nice seeing completed work out there. Yeah, it's even, that's what should be celebrated. Yeah, mm-hmm. even like the time that I saw one of those growlers that you designed for Barkerville, Barkerville? I think, yeah, up in Campbell River at some little tiny uh, brewery. It's like, yeah. oh shit, that's cool. Like, I know who did that. That's a thing. Yeah, yeah. It's it's not a website, which is just a weird, flashy little picture. But, but to see it somewhere else that isn't here, totally. yeah, and like in your realm or in your area, yeah. to see it somewhere else is it's even more interesting. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. No, it's, yeah, I don't know. I've been doing this job long enough where, like, some kind of permanence in the work is would be really cool. <laughs> like, not to say, can we change it? Can we, can, you know, can we keep fucking with it forever? It's like, oh, it'll never be done. And every time you put your thumb in that pie, it gets a little more <laughs> fucked up. And it's just, I don't know. Just one more stir. <laughs> but speaking of things that are fucked up, and your delightful. Se- your segues are great, by the way. <laughs> that you can put your thumb in. <laughs> they get. Oh, I think maybe a guy gets a thumb in the eye in this one. 
Um, just a, a thing. It's it's kind of design related. Um, Brian, I, I, I don't know if you follow skating at all. Like a bit skateboarding. Not like I used to, but oh yeah. <laughs> so this crew uh, in in England, outside London, uh, near the Stockwell Skate Park, wherever that is. Anyway, it's uh, oh, from South London. Um, these just a skate crew, like nobody's pro, nobody's anything. Like they're all good and they all have their own style and stuff. But it's just like this specific crew made a movie called Blokes. And it's like the first five minutes are like some of the most violent shit you've ever seen. It's just like super like B movie, horror movie. When you, when you sent it to me, I didn't know it was a skate movie. Yeah. Because the first five minutes is just like a, a, a South London two gangs fighting. Sure. And like somebody gets scalped. Like it, it kind of feels Guy Ritchie esque, and there's uh, yeah. some other British influences in there, but it's done, it's quite well done. It escalates very much so like an Anchorman fight. Yeah, but like yes. like a Texas Texas chainsaw. <laughs> 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 but then chainsaw it, mask it cuts style. into skateboarding, and it's like, oh shit, this is actually really good. Yeah, I was very impressed by it. Yeah, there's like, it's like kind of movie, and then kind of skate video and then kind of skate bales and then that one dude with a shaved head that in the beginning he's wearing like a ponytail wig and stuff like that yeah. and like all these guys all their tattoos they're all just like black and white like looks like prison style and they're all just covered in all these little tattoos sure, yeah. so it's just like you can tell that area like all those dudes get those kinds of tattoos that's it nobody yeah. nobody reaches for the red or the green it's just that that old black that turns kind of bluey well, it's all like probably hand poked and stuff. They yeah. just do it themselves. I remember yeah. seeing on uh, some skate supplier's website a couple years ago, they actually were selling like hand poked tattoo kits that you could buy. Oh, yeah. Basically like hepatitis in a bag, I suppose, <laughs> you know, but that's what the kids are into, you know? Yeah. Anyway. Um, but the blokes, yeah. So if you go to thrashermagazine.com sure. and check out blokes, um, or you go to worstdesignshow.com, we'll put it in the show notes and all that. But it is, we'll skip ahead a little bit to get some. It's embarrassing. But the young so yeah, the skate crews just meet up. Everyone's just getting smashed. <laughs> there, there's a thumb in <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, a guy just got his eyeball ripped out and a dude ate it. So if you like that and you like English <laughs> things and skateboarding, check out Blokes. I know I would definitely do that. I was, I did, yeah, there was like no end to how I was delighted by this. I, I was waiting for my lady to be done doing something. I was like, I'll put this on. It's like 27 minutes. I'll probably get a minute in, then we'll go. And she just took forever. And I watched the whole thing. I was so happy that I sent it to Marcus like right away. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there's one dude, the uh, the guy with the shaved head, he... Like eats like this huge grasshopper, and he like cuts his tongue with like a beer pole tab, and then he like spits blood on a the wall, then writes blokes in it just in a park, and I don't know, it's just madness. It's just like the skateboarding that doesn't really exist anymore that you see. It's just like say, yeah, raw, sounds, bloody, yeah. horrible shit. Yeah, not as not as uh, West Forty Nine as it's been lately. So. <laughs> oh God, love you, West Forty Nine. <laughs> Have you been in there at any point in the past like year? Oh man, it's been a long time. What's, what's happening there? Are they? They don't sell skate brands anymore. So other than Thrasher, <laughs> funny enough. Yeah, since yeah, it's a, exactly. It's a chic. Yeah, it's a commodity. Um, but for those of you listening, if you don't know, West Forty Nine is like the mall skate shop. And when they started, they they built skate parks and they had a team and all that. Now they don't sell any skateboard brands. What? They, sell, they sell skateboards. Yeah, but their but, own brand. A bunch of them are like, uh, oh, so do you know Zoo York? Yes. They, I, I'm aware of the name. So <laughs> That's they, as much as I know of it. They were an East Coast skate team forever. They had like gnarly skaters like Brandon Westgate and Forrest Edwards. And they, I don't know, they just had the like like a true like East Coast vibe. I think Zared Bissett was on it. And then one day they kicked everyone off the team. They said, we will no longer have a sponsored skateboard team. Then they started making like shoes and stuff just to sell in like mall skate shops. So they, it's it's horrifying. Like they rip off like Vans, like 
even down to like the checkerboard pattern. But they'll just put some like weird gross stripe on the side instead. And and it's bizarre. And it's, that's Zoo York or West 49 brand? Zoo York and the West 49 brand. And they have like, what the... F- oh, tons of other <clears throat> like crossover skate company oh, stuff probably. Like that um, Young and Reckless, you know that Rob Deerdex cousin on that Rob's, Rob and Big's Fantasy Factory or whatever? He, Rob Deerdex had that like Who's? shithead cousin that is like... Young and Reckless, my clothing company. His name was like Catman or something. Who said? Oh, is that the one with like, the sketchy cat that like gives the finger? Oh no, that's Rip and Dip. Oh, okay, that's legitimate. Okay, <laughs> well, that's my daughter's favorite skate company because it has a little cat giving the finger. It's just who, stickers all over. <laughs> who is uh, that one skateboarder? Who is your favorite? He was the hip hop artist as well. Oh, <laughs> Jeremy Rogers. That's it. it Sherm. Would he, Sherm the worm? Would he have stuff at West Forty Nine? If anybody gave, oh, I don't know. He's he's still a gamble, even the lame people. Right. Yeah, he's a he's a unique guy. But yeah, check out King of the Road. I remember the last time I whatever. went into West Forty Nine to find pants. Did not go well because uh, apparently the pants that they sell aren't built for humans with uh, legs of an adult. Sure. Yeah. Because I couldn't get them. Like up my thighs, <laughs> no yeah. matter what size I picked, is like I can't, I can't pull these up. These yeah. are ridiculous. Like, you need the skinniest legs. I'm like, well, this doesn't work out. Well, I'm out. Gonna go to <clears throat> big and tall, thick legs and a fat sack. <laughs> that's that's why I kept getting caught on my sack. <laughs> just, you got the elephantitis going. <laughs> they kept begging me to close the uh, change room door, and I said, "Fuck you." Do you have extra gusset room in these pants? <laughs> uh, so yeah. Check out blokes. There you go. Even if you don't like skating, I think people should watch that. Oh, it's yeah, it's it's, it's just, entertaining. Like it's it has reminiscent that, of Bronson the movie with. Have you seen that with Tom Hardy? Yeah, it, it's, it's that like dirty London. And if you ever want to see Tom Hardy's like frightened, very cold penis in a massive robin's nest of a bush, and <laughs> seeing him getting greased up by a prison librarian to then fight cops. That's the greatest movie ever. Is that if that's says, what you're after. If that's I've been looking for something exactly. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> I keep watching Dark Knight Rises. I'm like, can we see this guy's little dick? Dark, it's <laughs> it's good, but there's not enough pain. No. Definitely not. It's very late. This kind of reminds me of uh, uh, a cross between Bronson and Bum Fights. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a little bit. Bum Fights. <laughs> <laughs> that was a weird time. Finally, the two have become one. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Um, speaking of a uh, crossover, also, sometimes nope. I do like for as weird as the internet is now, I enjoy yeah. growing up with at a time where like you could watch stuff like that and nobody, it was never on the news. Yeah. Like, Oh, kids are watching this thing called bum fights. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, sure. It got in a lot of trouble later, but when you first watch it, like this is like, that was that's pretty hilarious. rad for a while. Yeah, yeah. man, it was the best. <laughs> See the, the only mashup that they didn't do that they should have done is, is, Bum fights guest starring Kimbo Slice before he died, <laughs> oh and just just walking up to killed people. <laughs> we're just walking up to like Any eighty pound fighter. Oh yeah, just eighty pound crackheads and, and Kimbo Slice just walk up and just drill them, drill them straight into a wall. Get Mike Tyson involved there. Oh, that'd be <laughs> fabulous. That's probably where he got his idea for his face tap. Oh fuck, yeah. yeah, that was a good idea. Somebody posted a video of him just recently. I think he's in his fifties, yeah, like mid fifties, showing like technique of how to move around an opponent and he's like of course he's not as fast as he was in his day but still at this time you're like i i wouldn't want to i wouldn't want to go near him if he's threatening to punch you you're yeah. dead yeah because he still knows how to fight and he's still like insane and he's sure. a heavy guy now so getting back into shape i heard really Killed yeah it. he's going healthy now that he bought a weed farm he has like <laughs> one of the biggest weed plantations oh, yeah. in North North America outside Las Vegas. And apparently he smokes um, about, f- what is it? Oh, it was on Jimmy Kimmel or something like that. He, he smokes something like $40,000 worth of weed a month. Well, if your joints are 10 grand each, then yeah, that's easy to do. Yeah, that dude's not messing around. But, but if they're a, a dollar, whew. <laughs> 40,000 joints a month. I saw an $80 joint at the weed store the other day. It was like a oh, wrapped, really? wrapped in a weed leaf cigar <laughs> style wrap and 80. had, had uh, yeah, like oil. It was like dipped in oil, yeah. honey oil, and then rolled in keef. And 
Oh, stuff I never even heard of all over this shit. Is but. it? It's a. Is it one that you smoke it and then it'll last you the week? <laughs> I don't imagine it lasts any longer. I think it's just something to sell to someone. You know, so, right, someone's right, just right. already stoned as hell going in there. Like, fuck, I'll get that. Sure, <laughs> yeah, I got eighty bucks. <laughs> there's a company in Canada, um, a pre-roll weed company called. It's like F- Fukushima. It's named after some atom bomb dropping. It's it's real cool. cool. Um, but yeah, they have hundred dollar joints. And it, exactly, it's like wrapped in all the crap and rolled in like the crystals and the keef and all that shit. <laughs> it's a hundred dollar joint. It's got truffle like grated onto it. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it <laughs> it comes in like a Nike Air Max. And but yeah, it's it's weed like like the company I work for. We do a lot of uh, legal packaging and just like marketing and all that for l- legal cannabis in Canada. And it's becoming like like designer level weed, like where $80 joints aren't, it's sure. That's for like the dickhead that instead of just buying like a bottle of Smirnoff and, well, and whooping it, it up, yeah. it's like, no, no, I have to have kettle one. It's like, you don't have to, you want people. No, I can afford to, it or, yeah. I, or I want people to think I can. Yeah. So now it's just that weed is just in that, in that same light now. Yeah. I, I'm sure it's just another, a new thing for, for some people to ball out on, you know? Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's real funny. Cause at the end of the day, it's just weed. Like, yeah. Yeah. What do you get? Like, I, fuck, I don't know. I I smoke a bit here and there, but I, I could never, never spend $80 on a joint. It's just like that bit in Grandma's Boy, right? When he's like, <laughs> I got this, I got this. He's like, man, fuck, I don't give a shit what it's called, man. I just want a bag of weed. <laughs> 20 bucks. Yeah. Um, another thing I found that um, you guys may both have an opinion on is the Los Angeles Clippers got new jerseys. Mm-hmm. People are saying they stole their <laughs> typography from the Grand Theft Auto San Andreas <laughs> game so, cover. So, no, they didn't. No, it is very different. But it's just kind of funny that people are like, no, no, they totally ripped it off when, like, if you look at any, like, like old school, like, late 80s, early 90s rap, or, like, like all the hip-hop tattoos, like the West Coast stuff, like, it's all that writing, like... Well, yeah, it's just, uh, what is it, Old English or, or uh, whatever they call it, something gothic. Yeah. But, I mean, it's reminiscent of the area and stuff. To me, it, you know, doesn't make sense. Yeah, so who did Grand Theft Auto steal it from? I was going to say, who's, yeah, who's yeah. complaining from Rockstar Games or whatever? Probably no one. Yeah, exactly. It's just a bunch of weird people that thought that uh, their favorite video game was the had the best cover of all time. Yeah. yeah. I also saw that... Uh, Somebody made a comment, or maybe it was an article. I don't know. It doesn't matter. That the NBA is now starting to take cues from the big three league. Oh, yeah. In terms of like going different with their actual team branding. Because the big three, yeah. they have that ghost as one of their logos. That yeah. really shitty, weird ghost. Yeah. One. I, think, I don't even know what they're called. But yeah, Brian, they, do, you, do you know the big three? What's that? Was it, like, was it Ice Cube? Yeah, I think Ice Cube. Started cu- like like a three on three basketball league, but they got like Allen Iverson who never showed, showed up for practice <laughs> ever, but they got like X stars but, and but other it's a, people. It's a half court game. So sure. they can have older players who can't run okay. as much anymore. Cause they're not going back and forth. It's just like, yeah. you go back to your position, but the branding for the teams are like completely different than the NBA. And they're more, they're less traditional, I guess. And three headed monsters. Yeah. Like that's oh, pretty rad. Hydra. Yeah. Like, that's pretty cool for a team. Like, it seems like arena football or something. Oh, like that. oh yeah, or, or like that football from uh, XFL. What is that uh, movie? Oh shit, something uh, Starship Troopers. Like oh, arena football. They play yeah. in that. It's like super. <laughs> yeah. It's just almost <laughs> a, novel, a, good... <laughs> a novelty style thing, you know. See, if you go back to the Clippers uh, jersey themselves, there's the Ghost Ballers. Yeah, <laughs> the it's so good. Um, w- what I don't What's, like is that they still so one have, of the logos was trilogy and it just had one ball with one eye in it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Should have been like three books. There's an eye, a ball, and a two. word. Should we be the Cyclops? <laughs> like, nah, trilogy. <laughs> Why? I had two more balls. Now nah, we're good. Because man, because. <laughs> sorry. Go ahead. So the while I like the jersey itself, it's great. But then they still have the the new L.A. Clippers logo on the belt. Yeah, that's like, that's well, about the laziest logo. It's like I don't know. Should have should that change if we're doing the whole thing? Like, 
Well, they just redid that one a couple of years ago, that yeah. badge. But yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Brian, what is it? Um, Marks and I, about like five episodes back or something like that, we did. We went through every logo in the NBA and tore it to shit. Because up close, they're terrible. Sure. They're horrible, terrible. <laughs> like, no attention well, to detail. They're, and all the letter, lettering's really, really, really weird. Like, like, it's somebody who can draw lettering. And seeing people with a computer not be able to make block letters properly, it's <laughs> fucking baffling. But... I think it's yeah. just an effort to sell merchandise because of uh, some of the new players that they brought in. Yeah, is that that's a Toronto guy? Uh, Ka- Kawhi Leonard. Ka- Kawhi. Yeah. Yeah. Kawhi. Yeah. So it looks like what they're doing for the new Clippers jersey, and I don't know if this is like one of their they call it like the city jerseys, whatever. But it looks like they're going for the West Coast version of what the Nets did a few years ago. Yeah. Black and white. We'll keep it like true to our scene. And I think oh. it looks kind of cool. I think it looks kind of lazy too. I, I don't think it's anything remarkable. Say it's pretty pretty toned down. But yeah. Well, also what's really interesting is the sponsors are well, now more prominent. Yeah, they're on the jersey. So it's like, yeah. it's like soccer overseas, how they have just like the big sponsors on their jerseys. It's like one big one. But it's interesting that there's Nike... And Bumble. Yeah. What is Bumble? Bumble is a, a dating app. I thought that's what that was. A dating yeah. app? <laughs> it's, it's similar to <laughs> Tinder, but the only difference is is that the um, female has to initiate the conversation as opposed to like the male kid just can't yeah. message people his penis. That's probably so a So she good has thing. to initiate the conversation if there's a match. Just a request the penis. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Can so I see your penis? From chatting with people who Dear have, Tom Hardy. have used it. I hear you got a real little one. There's still dick pics on there. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's like, so, hey, there's a match. Hey, what's up, dick pic? So also from like a branding perspective, like not every one of these dudes on the team is going to be sponsored by Nike, but Nike's on every jersey. So if you're sponsored by Under Armour for some reason, why it's acceptable these days to wear Under Armour, but you're wearing those on your feet and then you have Nike on the jersey, that's like a superpower move. It's like we have more money than all you motherfuckers, and we'll even be on here with the dating app Bumble, and it won't hurt us one bit. Do they are they required to wear Nike shoes as well? No, because it's know. probably who makes all the jerseys or whatever. Yeah, right? yeah, they like a marquee sponsorship to be like we, we're going to be on every jersey. You can wear whatever you want on your feet, but just know that all like all the footage of you will include the top half of your body <laughs> and our logo. So fuck you. What's Steph Curry on, like, K-Swiss or something stupid? New Balance? Skechers? I don't know. <laughs> He's on Heelys? <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> Just do a Heelys commercial while <laughs> shooting basketball. Yeah. Soap shoes, man. Oh, what about uh, snowshoes? S-N-E-A-U-X. And Steve-O was, like, their, their like, main what sponsor f- dude. What are those? Snow shoes. Yeah, yeah, I heard that. They're like <laughs> horrible, horribly made like mall skate shoes oh. that uh, Steve-O wore, and he looked like an asshole, and that was when he was smoking a lot of PCP, so there's not a whole lot you can blame him for. Um, speaking of celebrities doing stupid shit, pretty good segue. Yeah, it wasn't bad. Moby got a new tattoo, Brian. Sweet. If you were a Moby fan, which you may be, knowing what... <laughs> Anybody knows about Moby, which he looks kind of looks like a turtle. He doesn't really talk a lot. Sure. Um, what kind of tattoo do you think he would get? And where? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> Electronic music superstar, human turtle. I, I, I'd want to <laughs> say he'd get some sort of uh, like Eastern spiritual sort of style oh, thing. Like but, a mandala or something? Yeah, something like that. A lotus maybe. Mm-hmm. But uh, that or maybe... Maybe he went with something more traditional, something a little more hip and current, or, oh. or he just got a giant white whale on him. Oh, somewhere. you're going to be so he, bummed at what he actually got because all of those are better. Can I take a guess? Yeah. He got the Clippers logo <laughs> yeah. tattooed on his face. Yep. On the dope. And then he got Bumble on his <laughs> scrotum. So, all right. So, Moby got a new tattoo and he got. Oh, no. In all caps, Helvetica, vegan for life on the side of his neck. Is that real? That doesn't even look real. Though. I thought the exact same thing. I looked into it, it and yeah. he's been vegan for 32 years. Animal activism is his whole life. 
And I've seen multiple pictures with that on the side of his neck. It does look fake. It looks like a fake tattoo, big time. It looks like even there, it looks fake. Like it looks like a peel off one. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But there are, are multiple. Some about celebrities, like they got so much cash, they can't afford nice tattoos. Oh, we're gonna get into that next segment too, because these horrifying what? dickheads. Oh, yeah. yeah, there's multiple, multiple angles. But yeah, it it's like, oh, back. Oh, good one. Oh, there you go. Um, that's, that's the other side of his neck. Didn't he just backwards. get a different shirt? <laughs> yeah. So, like, it kind of looks like it. It doesn't kind of look like it just got done there. It's all red, but he could have just been trying to rub it off unconsciously because it's stupid as shit. But yeah. Corporate death burger and whatever. Yeah, so millions of dead cop shirt on. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I we salute uh, you, Moby. Uh, I'm I'm <laughs> I'm more upset ab- about um, that type of person. Yeah, because oh, I the the righteousness. It drives me nuts. It's self righteousness. Yeah, like you and I both don't eat the meats. Nope. Um, I either, yeah, but but d- I don't need a tat for it. Every every post you, just, you do, it's a tattoo. Like hashtag, don't eat meat. Yeah, <laughs> oh, ever. dude, I've 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 seen it. It's to me, it doesn't need to be mentioned, no matter what. You know, I mean, unless someone's serving food for you, and even then, yeah, someone's making you a meal, just eat it. Yeah, yeah, I don't know, but uh, I saw that and I, I really it's, wanted to share it because I thought it was quite I special. It. I still don't think it's real. It looks weirdly fake, but I've seen multiple articles and and photos. I don't know if he's like reapplying it every time he goes out, like but it's like weirdly like crisp. Continues for. midlife crisis. I like the caption <laughs> in that middle photo. Oh, I lost Top, it. One up, yeah, right oh, there. Right, well. Continues midlife crisis. What, what gets vegan and yeah. tattoo. <laughs> he bought a new Lamborghini and got a tattoo. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, Moby, you continue to surprise us because we'd never expected anything from you. What's so. he up to these days? He wrote a book all about him, basically his whole career up until now. And I guess he was quite a blackout drunk and drug addict forever. Right. And one story he told was uh, he was like blackout drunk and then he was just going up to every guy at some big party in Los Angeles and just like grabbing everyone's dick. And then Donald Trump was there and he grabbed his dick and he just wasn't having it at all. But Moby's like, because he's blacked out and just like ran into the woods or whatever. But wouldn't it be ironic <laughs> if, cause you can get vegan ink, right? Is that right? Yeah. Most of it is vegan. Yeah. But wouldn't it be funny if it was meat based? <laughs> <the ink? laughs> I don't know. The how thing that's is, is there's so many like, the transfer paper, like the stencil paper, technically isn't vegan. They yeah. do make a vegan solution for that now, I guess, or a vegan option. Yeah. But oh, fuck, that's great. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> finally. <laughs> no, I mean that it has a chance where the tattoo itself is not vegan. I'm yeah. Sure. The ir- the irony of that is just delightful. Oh, that's the best. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. So uh, Moby, and he has to add a second part down below, it. and so is this tattoo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so uh, go to WorstDesignShow.com and check out this fuckhead stupid neck tattoo. Uh, speaking of stupid people, Aaron Carter, famed is. brother of Nick Carter from NSYNC. Backstreet Boys. Backstreet Boys, that's what it was. Backstreet's back. Don't, don't feel bad about All right. getting that wrong. So <laughs> I remember in like the early 2000s or mid-early, whatever it was, or like Aaron Carter had like a reality show on like MTV for some fucking reason. Like Ryan Sheckler had one. Sure. Uh, Life of Ryan, which I watched because occasionally he would skate and then he would yeah, cry. Yeah, cry and like, whine the rest of the time. These chicks jo- just don't get me. I'm like, oh, fuck. Like, how can you do that and then go and like... What about the 800 million other chicks that love you? Oh, my God. But then there'd be the clip in the show where he's like kick flipping down 18 stairs. I'm like, oh, there. There's the thing. for the whole time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just like, oh, I wish I could find it. What was it? <clears throat> I wish I could find a chill girl. That was what he was crying about. <laughs> anyway, so Aaron Aaron Carter, um, not trying to get attention at all. Oh, he has a face tattoo. <laughs> he went and oh, got inspired no. by the Rihanna um, dressed as Medusa. She, she, there's like a photo of her. Oh, no. So Aaron Carter <sighs> got a 
what I would consider a very poor face tattoo. It looks weird. Well, it's a thing now. It's, you know, there are definitely some, like to me, even just about any of them are not in great taste, but that's just my opinion, I suppose. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> lots of them can look real sharp, you know, but that's just, it's just there for the sake of it being out there. Just like, yeah. you know, like when, what's her name? Britney Spears shaved her head and stuff. It's just yeah. like, a, like some sort of weird cry out for some sort of attention, I suppose. But this is a little bit, uh, it's stupid. It's a little nuts. So for it those of you listening, suit. it's, it's Aaron Carter. Just picture like a blonde meth head and he got a giant tattoo of Medusa on the side of his face because he already had love tattooed under his eye in, I guess, as many different typefaces as he could think of at the time. <laughs> a little umlaut over the E. <laughs> yeah. Love <laughs> What a dumb prick. But, yeah, this was a, I don't know. Yeah, he was. Even the, the neck tattoo. Which he just got, that's over top of that one, He that's where he just got that lion or oh, whatever. Oh, covers that. Yeah, so you want to cover a giant neck tattoo with a giant or neck tattoo. Um, there was some story on the news that he was at some some event, I don't know, but he brought his mom as a date. Oh, yeah. And uh, th- that's when they're asking about the tattoo and bringing his mom to this event. And you could see, the, yeah, the way he was explaining <laughs> things. is like the first thing I said was <laughs> cocaine's a hell of a drug. <laughs> and then uh, Jen politely corrected me and said, no, that's math. It's yep. like, oh, yeah, actually, that makes a lot of sense. For some reason, I thought the caption under this photo was going to say drum, not face tattoo. <laughs> Shows off his drum. <laughs> his it was drum. Aaron, his Aaron Carter, drum. What, what can only be described as like a Newfoundland fisherman sweater, <laughs> yeah, holding just a drum normal. which in a parking lot and a face tattoo. He definitely stole it to get either his face tattooed or more crack. So how much would you guess that tattoo cost him? Fifteen hundred. Well, I don't know. Two thousand. Fuck. I wouldn't be surprised that, given the quality, some guy was just psyched enough to do it on him and just gave it to him or something. But I have no idea, man. Five thousand. Five thousand dollars. It was a home visit. He he called his personal tattoo artist with the artwork under his eye that says "Love." Of course, you're gonna stick with is that, that guy. This person, Rock Roll G or whatever, or is that Rock him? Rock Roll G Hard. Instagram. Could be. Click on it. Yeah, because that has yeah that has his like Aaron Carter's. I was gonna say maybe that's Aaron Carter's. Oh yeah, Instagram. he's a rock and roll gangster. Oh, you are a rock and roll gangster. Look at you, Herschel L. Carrasco. Whoa, 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 go back up for a sec. He's verified tattoo artist of the culture. Okay. <laughs> Brian, I totally forgot to ask when we first met. Are you a tattoo artist of the culture? Yeah, just not that culture. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so this dude, he looks like a bit of a kook, but some yeah, he of the just works? takes pictures. Like I bet if every, you looked at every one of those ones that he's standing next to someone, it's probably some basketball player or whatever. Yeah, like I said, right? They all can afford the best, and really, the best tattooers. There are some that make pretty incredible tattoos that are charging insane amounts, and if you ask me, they're more in tune with that guy than than myself or the fellows I work with and stuff. But I know some of the best tattooers in Canada and they charge a pretty reasonable price because they're in tune with the proper tattoo client, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, But these guys that are just like the Instagram tattoo star. I I love to see it. It's, it's like the, I don't know, the new, uh, reality tattoo TV show or something. It's Uh, it's just more direct, more immediate and more personal and uh, more funny. (laughs) I'm still waiting for the good reality TV. Tattoo show. Do you know? Yeah, it was it LA Inc. Miami. Or, I watched Miami Inc. when it was on <clears> back <throat> in the day. Was there was New York Inc. Miami Inc. Yeah, which was the same owner. Well, the yeah the actually the owner of that shop, Ami James. The first episode or two of Miami Inc. does touch on the uh, the proper history and and heritage in Miami, where they yeah. all those guys, Chris Garver, Darren Brass, all those guys worked at for a while, which was a shop called Tattoos by Lou, owned by Lou Sabaris, who mm-hmm. actually taught the guy who taught me, which I'm quite, oh, that's quite fond of that <clears throat> connection, I suppose. But um, yeah, I think that just like anything, a lot of it sort of got away from them 
having TV cameras and money tossed all up in their face and everything. And, yeah, you know, it's just bred tons of, like you say, that was almost 20 years ago now. So a whole culture of people that all they know about tattooing is what they saw on television, you know, yeah. where it's like celebrities and tattooers who they didn't really get into the fact that all those guys had put in 10 or 15 or 20 years at that point when they were on that show where, you know, they're yeah. kind of at the point where they do that. And now people start out tattooing, expecting to be tattooing Aaron Carter's face, you know, like <laughs> only so much of us will ever get that honor and privilege, you know? <laughs> well, I couldn't think of a more useless thing to practice on. I've seen people practice on bananas, but yeah. someone's got to eat that. No one's going to eat Aaron Carter's face. That guy's a Not now. fucking balloon animal. Except like, himself. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure he's a uh, sort of zombie. Tried that a few times, but yeah. So this guy, uh, rock roll G, the rock and roll gangster. Um, apparently, when Aaron Carter wanted to get it done, that guy had to get had to convince Aaron Carter not to tattoo that Medusa in the middle of his face. He's gonna go oh, over yeah. the nose, over the face. No, he's just gonna get yes. a Medusa on his face, yeah. like turn transformation. I've always uh, had the great idea. Oh, Jesus. Christ. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I've so always there's had a photo of Aaron beside the artist. Wonderful idea of tattooing somebody else's face over yeah. my face. Yeah. And I think that'd be really funny. Face on. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Nick Cage's face. <laughs> I mean, who else would you go half for? Half Nick Cage, half Travolta. <laughs> yeah. So. But think about how popular uh, and famous you'd be right after that for getting Nicolas Cage's face tattooed over your face. Oh, oh man. So you'd be terrible. in every movie for sure then. <laughs> <laughs> all these ads for these weird boots with all this weird sewing stuff, I see them all the time Those now. Look like moccasins or something, you know? And there's one site that sells them, and I took a screenshot just because the name was so funny, that the company that sells the shoes is called Banggood. Yeah, there it is on that one. Oh, there it is, Banggood. I've, uh, Bang I've never seen those before. I should spend more time on the internet. Yeah. Um, Banggood.com is not what you think it is, everybody. It's shoes. <laughs> it's horrifying shoes that have a number what five. About on. Bang well. Ah, well, that's the British one. <laughs> um. Oh, so yeah, God. Aaron Carter, you're a champion. Um, I just couldn't imagine going in with to want to get in the middle of your face. Like, how would it sit? Like, would Medusa yeah. a face be on your forehead and then like her arms under it's, your eyes? It is interesting, isn't it? Like, I just I don't know if there was an actual game plan or if he's like, yeah, I just put it on my face. Why I don't wouldn't know. he just, I mean, obviously, because to be a rock and roll G, you got to do $5,000 tattoos that take an hour. But <laughs> I was like, why would he, I mean, if you try to talk him out of it, just don't do it, you know? But yeah, I guess that's the way those guys got to do it is you got to keep doing that shit on yeah. D-listers to but you, keep your cred up. You compare Aaron Carter to... Pro skater Antoine Dixon, who got like a giant pot leaf tattooed like up his nose and on his cheeks and in the directly in the middle of his face, he's full on nuts. But uh, but he's having a great time. Can you click on this? <clears throat> I'm sure it's had less of an effect on his life. Uh, yeah, he's been in prison a ton. See, that's the thing about like Aaron Carter just looks like one of those weird dudes that like one of these. What do they call them? SoundCloud rappers. Oh it's yeah. It's just like you oh, gotta, like Lil Zan. You got to have a bunch of face tats that are done poorly by good tattooers, <laughs> but to have any cred, you and, know, like it looks like and, I was in jail, but I wasn't. And no arm tattoos. Oh no, no, straight yeah. to the face. Warp to her bodysuit, <laughs> <laughs> neck up, and just like from about the wrist down. Holy fuck! Um, just gotta right. look the part, like snowboarding. Yeah. So. Last thing we do in the first segment, there's uh, Brian. I, I'm I'm sure you're not familiar with the majesty of Jerry King. He's this. Um, he calls himself one of the mo- the internet's most prolific cartoonists, and he does a lot of cartoons about graphic design, especially web design. Even though I I've seen no evidence that he knows what the fuck is going on <laughs> in any profession, including cartooning. So what we do is we bring up a cartoon. I I blank out all the words, then. Marcus and yourself can speculate as to what they're going to be saying. And keep in mind, you have to adjust your brain chemistry to think like an idiot. You have to be like, I'm the worst, stupidest person that I I know. And 
all my ideas are bad and I and here's a new one. So uh, hold on before yep. we jump into that, I'd just like to point out the shirt, the picture where he's wearing a shirt that says FTP. File transfer protocol. See, that's where my brain went to. <laughs> yeah. And then I was like, oh wait, I bet you that means fuck the police. <laughs> Not and like he's calling out an FTP client. <laughs> what? Should I use passive? <laughs> Nothing passive about Antoine Dixon. Oh, you got the wrong port. All right, so Okay, so this is already bad because there's nothing happening in the frame. I, nope. Fuck, I hate you for this. Yeah. So it's a, a woman and a man talking, and she's kind of pointing to her face? Or is it her mouth? He, oh, I he, think she's... Uh, he yeah, almost drew a hand in this one, but it looks like a dick. It does. <laughs> it straight up looks like a dick. Yeah, like, that's supposed to mean something. I found, yeah. I found this is dick. Is he her dentist? <laughs> My tooth hurts. I have nothing to go off of with this, except for... It's something to do with color. Nope. See, yeah, they're bad. So there's also to part to frame this as a picture. There's two a gigantic speech bubbles. Oh, well, they got a lot to say, but, but at the same it. time they don't there's, say shit. There's nothing else. So Brian, this has to do. When I show the the next tab, it has to do with something to do with <laughs> like digital computer design something. Can you imagine? Now again, picture picture an idiot trying to think like that person. Don't be clever, because I can guarantee that's not coming. <clears throat> it looks like she may be gesturing about some sort of tech support issue she had on the telephone. Oh, could be. But knowing very little and having no experience with computer design, I, I'm going to have to... <laughs> limited to about that oh. idea. Well, the, the really, best, I'm not sure. The best part is that Jerry King doesn't either. Yeah. So. Yeah, and for having <laughs> calling himself one of the most prolific tat or tattoo fuck. Yeah. Uh, Wait, what? Cartoonist online, and he's he's on thousands of cartoons everywhere. He has a hundred Twitter followers, and that's my favorite thing. My second favorite thing is when I reveal the words, Marcus. Please take so us home. The lady says it's terrible. I've got a date. And this blemish is enormous. The guy says, no, dear, it's barely visible. It's just a pixel. <laughs> it's so stupid. I don't dumb. even see a blemish. <laughs> yeah, you forgot to fucking create that. What's the resolution on this thing anyway? Oh, it's tight. It's a drawing. You can... <laughs> can we move on from this, please? It's a Ziggy. Yep. Oh, God. It... I'd rather read Family Circus. Yeah. Oh, Ziggy is good. <clears throat> or bad. With hidden Christian undertone. It's, it's when he goes to, to the, the Seinfeld or whatever with the The complaint comic. department. That's what I, was say. I wish I was I taller. Wish that's what she could have been saying that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, and then Jay Peter. It's a like, Ziggy. I recognize the this, Eddie. Wow, well, it's a Ziggy. <laughs> Some charlatan has stolen his work and tried to pass it off as his own. Quick lane to my archives. <laughs> Oh, uh, all right. Well, thank you, Jerry King. Go that's, fuck yourself that's forever. That's his fault, though, because he has uh, Ziggy butt bed sheets, Elaine. Oh, it's <laughs> true. Peter says, yeah, it's putty. That must so have happened Ziggy. subconsciously. <laughs> my pig uh, says my wife's a slut. <laughs> 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 no, that's a complaint. Was that the one Kramer wrote? <laughs> one of those guys. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, thanks, Jerry King. Uh, we're going to take a quick break and come back and talk all about how I think t tattooing is probably the perfect job ever. And Brian will confirm every one of my suspicions. <laughs> all right, bye. Sounds good. What is that? I painted my face. You painted your face? Yeah. Why? Well, you know, support the team. Well, you can't walk around like that. Well, why not? Because it's insane. Oh, hey, you gotta let them know you're out there. This is the playoffs. Ooh, hey, looking back, everybody. Bringing up my notes. Um, whatever you just listened to. Um, is whatever audio we chose to put in during the, the break. So uh, I'm feeling <laughs> a strong Putty vibe today. I think it's going to be something with Putty. Yeah. Usually it's Larry David or something, but... Uh, Here we go. It's I'm feeling Putty we today. Just put in the devil's clip. 
That's a great segue. <laughs> Gotta support the team. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, are you going to the game like that? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you said no face painting. It's <laughs> a so letter D. <laughs> oh, you guys should check out this new show called Seinfeld that us young guys love. <laughs> so right now, uh, two, two of the cast members from The Office are doing a podcast where they rewatch the episode. That. Oh. Is anyone doing a Seinfeld one where it's just people watching it and talking about it the same Oh, there's got to be no fewer be than a dozen. Perhaps right. a baker's dozen. Speaking of bakeries, cinnamon vodka. <laughs> See? It's all good stuff. Yeah. Another babka? Another babka. That was on an episode of Barry I was watching the other night. You guys watch Barry with no. Bill Hader playing Assassin? Yeah. It's awesome. It's really, really good. But yeah, they... One of the guys from like the Ukrainian mob went and got two cinnamon babka, and I couldn't stop <laughs> laughing. <laughs> oh, totally! It's all it takes <laughs> just the tiniest little reference. Yeah, yeah. The uh, the Seinfeld well is deep. Um, so yeah, tattooing and design. The reason I'm so happy about this today is because I've always been a huge fan of of tattoo art. There's a million different styles. Everyone has their their take on it, and and all that. And it's just it's. It's really like, for me, the, the closest like one-to-one of, I make you a picture, you give me money. And that's it. With an art, when you're, if you're an artist, if it's not a commission, you're making a whole collection of art hoping somebody will sure. want to buy it. Hoping you find a gallery that'll stock it. Hoping this collection is as good as you promised it would be. Whatever it is. And with what we do with graphic design, uh, we get a client, there's a big discovery, there's lots of back and forth, it's all emails, there's a shitload going on. And what should take a month takes four months, and by the time you're done, you're just so choked that you're like, oh, fuck, that thing was a nightmare, okay, let's do the next one. And you don't celebrate, and then all of a sudden, each thing in your head is like, oh, that's going to take two weeks, Mm -hmm. but it should only take a day. Um, So the day you start working and the last day you actually get paid uh the final installment it could be look like marcus was saying it could be a year sure to finish a project so i have always loved tattooing just you know visually getting tattoos is fun it's expensive when you have three kids so oh yeah now that the kids are older i'm like oh like hey you can tie your shoes and you're buying your own clothes now because you Mm -hmm. you just want to it's just like now it's like, hey, maybe I'll start getting more tattoos now, which I'm yeah. stoked about because if I had no kids and I blew through it in my 20s and early 30s, I'd be like out of room. Oh, you look like Aaron Carter, man. Aaron Carter. <laughs> hey, your lips to God's ears, my man. Um, but yeah, so we have Brian Carr from Government Street Tattoos who does gnarly, gnarly, gnarly work. I, I, I really respect your work. I think it's just, it, it, it has this little take on it that not other, that other people aren't doing and I, I really enjoy it. So could you tell us just how you started tattooing in general? For like a lot of people will walk by a shop and see cool art and see people working, but like what does it take to get to where you are because <clears throat> for me I taught myself graphic design you don't need a certificate because there's no sure. health shit and all that involved so yeah so how does it how does it work for for tattoo uh well I mean it seems like every person I've ever talked to about it like how they got into yep. it or whatever is pretty I mean the same and very different you know I mean <clears throat> most people I'd say start out with getting them for me I guess yep. I can really only only verify that info I I got interested in it, I guess, seeing it through skateboarding, punk rock music, the stuff I was interested in when I was in school growing up. Yeah. Um, There was a fellow who opened up a skate shop where we used to hang out from probably middle school until after graduating, really. Um, And there was usually a tattoo shop in the back or at some points there was, you know, but it didn't quite grab my attention. I had a friend actually who, who started tattooing right at the end of high school, kind of, you know, self-taught like bought gear i remember in yeah. the cafeteria one day giving him 50 bucks to put towards it or whatever and oh, yeah. um you know figured it out to a degree actually the the guy like i had mentioned earlier who had um who had taught me is from the same town i am uh, i'm from bathurst in new brunswick mm-hmm. and he had learned like i was saying earlier in miami and around the time we were finishing school made his way back up 
to New Brunswick and kind of just crossed paths with my buddy Adam and sort of showed him the ropes when he was still pretty early on, you know, helped yep. guide him that way. And I guess, you know, the same similar thing I did. I didn't start out on my own, but from high school on, I had it more so just like not even a crazy deep fascination or interest in it right off the bat. I, I got my first one in Montreal when I was 18, just going there for warp tour or whatever. And yeah, walked into a shop with a CD I had just bought and they're like, what do you want? And I was just like, <laughs> I didn't even think about that. You know, I was just like, <laughs> yeah. I just want something. And I just got the little logo off the band CD or whatever. Which one was it? Um, it was like a split EP that Hot Water Music and Alkaline yeah. Trio did together. Oh, yeah. So yeah, it was yeah. like the Hot Water Music one. Cause even as a bigger Alkaline Trio fan, I, I didn't want the little heart with the skull design for some yeah. reason, you know? <laughs> yeah. So uh, now people just mistake the little flames with water as some sort of zodiac sign or something. But <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I got that and like didn't think even a whole lot of it. I was like, that's cool, you know. Um, and uh, I guess I had picked up a few magazines and stuff and again saw it more so through musicians that I was into, skateboarders at all yeah. of them. And uh, I think the next year I ended up getting one from my buddy back home and uh it was kind of a funny, not the best situation where we, he was working in the shop at the, in the back of the skate shop, but he had just suffered like a minor concussion skating the <laughs> night day before. So we were in there naturally with a few beers and yeah. why don't you get this tattoo, you know, before the bars open up or whatever. So <laughs> why not? And, uh, it was a couple of years cause I was in university then didn't really have any disposable income or anything, but I think when I was in school, it was when I started to really get interested in it. Um, after that second one, my buddy, um, sent me a couple websites where there was a lot of vintage flash, Sailor yeah. Jerry stuff, Mike Malone and, and that type that just kind of got, got my, uh, like inspiration and reference library kind of going. And I started, it was probably 12 years ago. I remember like 2007 that summer before going back to school where I was yeah. just drawing all the time. I had always drawn, you know, skate comics and stupid shit like that with my buddies yeah. all through grade school and everything. But it never had any purpose or direction, I guess. Yeah. And then once I really saw tattooing and I suppose also at the end of my like higher education route, not really sure what I would do with a fine arts or not a fine arts, but a bachelor of arts degree and yeah. not really being all that interested in being there, just kind of going through the motions, um, really sort of got me more and more interested with tattooing, I guess. And at the time that was my intention to just pick it up and figure it out. Yeah. And as I, as I just dove deeper into it all, I realized that wasn't the way to go about it. And I just kind of started drawing tattoo stuff more. Yeah. Graduated and got a job at a call center where I just, every day at break, would go pick up tattoo magazines and oh, yeah. sit there on the phones and just draw and draw. And that's cool. To the point where I wasn't allowed to have a paper and pen at my desk anymore, <laughs> you know, but um, just kind of kept at it. And it, yeah. it took a good while after sort of at first, you know, like any big dream, it's something you're like, that'd be awesome, but it probably will never happen, but I might as well just draw in my margin of my notebook because it's better than paying attention in school and stuff. Yeah. And uh, it just kind of couldn't shake it, you know? It just kind of grew and grew, and and that's where it all stemmed from. And once I realized I wanted to do it, I guess I just sort of... I was living in New Brunswick at the time. My wife, who we had just started dating like a month prior to this or something, had moved, was just about to move back to Ontario where her folks are from or where she's from. Mm -hmm. So to <clears throat> kind of keep that going, I, uh, and also to get a little bit more of a opportunity, I suppose, to tattoo, I moved to Montreal, be a bit closer to her and you know, hopefully open some doors with, you know, just more shops and, in, you know, where I got my first one and stuff. And, yeah. um, didn't work out. That's when I started really painting flash and stuff. Yeah. Um, which is a big know, part of being design. a tattoo artist. Like, yeah. However, your whatever your style, I mean, traditional flash is like the traditional Western motifs are what really caught my eye. Yeah. I, I guess you know, similar to those skate graphics and you know, punk rock like skate rock album covers, lots of color and high contrast stuff. You know, like all that stuff. And um, <clears throat> yeah, once I just like really got out there and into it and started drawing and painting more, it just kind of snowballed and yeah, you know, eventually led to. It, you know, a couple more years down the road from there, an opportunity to learn from actually that same guy who taught my buddy back in school, who at the yeah. time had moved to Barrie, Ontario. I had moved to Newmarket, Ontario, and 
that mutual friend of ours, Adam, had told him that I was not far away, and uh, he looked me up, and right away he was down to teach me, which was nice. That's a good. That's a good buddy to have. Yes, it was. Uh, <clears throat> you know, I mean, even with that connection, I had spent you know the better part of maybe four or five years really even the last few of those years actively looking for an apprenticeship. I mean, yeah. I see kids now come in. I mean, I'm still young enough to it, but um, coming in and they just pop their head in the shop, like, you guys want an apprentice? Like, they'll go to every shop and they don't really seem to care where they're learning from. They just want to get into it. But yeah. I could see a little of innocence at the beginning, just not knowing that that's not right. But yeah, when I moved to Ontario, there was a fellow in town, uh, Jay, who he had... Uh, just been doing awesome traditional tattoos, just like I wanted to wear. So I just yeah. hung out there all the time. I was getting tattooed every time I got paid pretty much for a year. And the guy that owned the shop just wasn't stoked on having me as an apprentice or having an apprentice, I guess. So, yeah. you know, but I didn't really go elsewhere because I just wanted to get tattooed by Jay. And I think at first just getting tattooed teaches you a whole lot. Yeah. So that's what I did. And then again, this opportunity with with my mentor, Rich, came about maybe a year and a half after hanging out there. So then I just hung out at that shop all the time, a little bit out of town, but. And so aside from like tattooing has a lot of technical aspects, like the setup, the machine, mm-hmm. the breakdown, the tuning, you know, the sterilization, like there's a lot sure. of like step-by-step things that have to be done properly. But who taught you the, like the design aspect of like, this will fit in, on this part of the body or like when I look at some tattoos where some people get like the weirdest placement, like they'll get it kind of like half down the back of the arm, like a one weird little thing where I just think like, you're going to wish that wasn't there later. Um, but like how much of a say do you typically have or, or influence on location? Like, do you get people fighting or do you get people being like, yeah, yeah, cool, cool. Because they don't know what, what they're doing anyway. Yeah. I mean, I try to keep that depending on the client, I suppose, you know, pretty much in the forefront of my, my thinking is that the average person that comes into the shop doesn't have a lot of tattoos. It would be, yeah. it's easy at first. I think when you're, you're getting going and you're, you know, you're finally doing tattoos and you're like the coolest guy in town, you know, and it's yeah. like, really, you're just like a drop in this whole big muddy bucket or whatever. But, yeah. um, you know, at first I felt like I would get a little more like, no, you can't do that upside down on your arm because it's wrong. It's like, it's right to them and it means something and like, I don't have to wear it. So now it's, you know, it takes a long time, I guess, because I'm still like, I don't really fight people for where they want their tattoos, but I definitely yeah. try to make a friendly and try professional and sort of, yeah, like guidance call or whatever, just to be like, you know, that one should go this way. If you want it that way, like, that's fine. But, you know, just so you know, when someone comes up to you and says like, why is that like that randomly? Cause they'll notice it. Yeah. Um, you know, I just, yeah, I mean, I guess ultimately I have the, the say in how it gets done. Yeah. If I cared that much, I would probably not make very much money and yeah. not, not be a very busy tattooer. You know, if I wouldn't do stuff the way I didn't think it should be done, that's, that's more of a, like a fine artist sort of thing, which is, you know, definitely not, not the way I approach it, I guess. Yeah. Um, even when it comes to my own designs, I like to put them in places where I think that they'll fit well. But I think, I mean, a lot of the design thing, it came from referencing and copying the flash of the old masters or whatever, you know, and yeah. and a lot of guidance from my mentor and, and tattooing itself. You know, you have ideas for things and you're like, this will look great there. And then you put the stencil on and it's like, oh, maybe it it won't. Yeah. Or, or you know, someone says like, how about we do it like this? And, and I'll be like, well, you know, just generally speaking, that doesn't work. And then you do it and it's like, oh shit, like, there you go. On the topic of the learning aspect of things, obviously everyone's uh, apprentice uh, apprenticeship time is all different. Oh, definitely. But w- with the industry itself, how how do you learn beyond that? Once you're already tattooing, it's like, <laughs> oh, I, I'm going to go increase my skills, go back to school. It's like, that's yeah. that, what is that? What are the options available? Well, it, I mean... There are some tattooers that offer seminars and things like that at conventions, you know, but yeah. typically those are not directed at, I don't know, it sounds weird to sort of like sp- like split up tattooing in a bunch of different factions or whatever, but I think that 
you know, the way that I was taught about it, just being like a regular kind of neighborhood street shop tattoo guy, like mm-hmm. oh, the best way to do that, to further your skills is just by spending time, like getting tattooed by tattooers who you look up to. You want to, you know, the best way to learn is to sit down and ask them questions. And most, even some of the best tattooers around that I've been fortunate enough to sit down with and get tattooed with, or even just hang out and paint or whatever, have, uh, you know, imparted a good amount of knowledge that, you know, I, you probably couldn't even pay for in one of those seminars. It's more personal yeah. and direct like that. And, and most of them, especially, you know, I guess it's just like at this point kind of have enough of a, of a compass to kind of roll with the guys that I guess are more on the same page as me where they're happy, just like I would be with a young tattooer, I suppose, to impart a little bit of wisdom or information to yeah. someone who's willing to sit there and pay for your time, you know, to get tattooed. Do you, do you ever feel that like you, you have a level that of skill that you want to just like cap it at? You're like, I don't want to be great at everything, but I want to reach a certain level where I'm really good at this. Cause I think about back in the day when I was attempting to draw flash and sure. buying on the magazines. And I remember reading about this one artist who was like the master of Chrome. <laughs> so like, Oh yeah, they could tattoo chrome and have yeah. it look realistic. Like, sure. I just don't know if people just like everyone aspires to be at that level of mastery, or if, if it's a more focused. <clears throat> I mean, it, that again, I think depends on the tattooer. I, I think just because what I've always done is lots of walk-ins and lots of what people want. Um, you know, I, I and I, with also a, a pretty strong, you know, love for the traditional kind of Western imagery. Um, I don't necessarily say or think even that I want to be the best at that or better at that than anything. I just think that that's how it is. You know, when people ask what's your favorite thing or what are you best at? I mean, I guess those can be different, but, um, for me, it's those types of designs, but it's in no way the only thing I want to be good at. I'm, that's what I enjoy about where I work now and the shops that I've been fortunate enough to work at in, uh, like Toronto new tribe has been a, a busy, busy street shop right down on Queen West for 25 years now. Mm -hmm. And just every job, every placement, every style, you know, you don't really even have a second to say no because there's someone else anyway that would do it on that street or in the shop or whatever. So um, I just like to try to do any job I think I can do a good job on, you know, and doing more and more of those just gets you better and better at it. You know, I guess... uh, even earlier today, I did kind of this weird tribally, like more like Polynesian pattern sort of sleeve on a guy yeah. that was all drawn on that stemmed from just doing a couple simple armbands in Toronto a few years ago when that oh, was yeah. a really popular. I mean, I think those have been <laughs> since they started out, people always want to get them for whatever reason, you know? Yeah. But like, like all the triangles and like that kind of thing. Yeah, kinda, those are, yeah. but even just like a band, like you see them all the time, like yeah. just a solid black band or two of them. Or, oh yeah, yeah. You know, so it's funny cause those are the types of things where I know a lot of tattooers would just be like, I'm not even touching that, you know, but really I, you know, at first there were definitely things that I was like, I'm all about that and didn't do a great job on, but yeah, I learned early enough on the stuff that I just don't think I have the right like approach for, or it just doesn't stick with me. Yeah. More, sometimes more like super realistic, detailed time consuming stuff. Yeah. Um, I like stuff that's a little more easy to read to the point and, and without all the bells and whistles for the most part. Yeah. Not that I don't appreciate the look of the other stuff. I just, I think I've recognized that that's just not my, my skill set. And uh, I'd rather send someone to someone that's going to get a good, good one than something that, you know, they, they're not happy with and I'm not happy with because it just kind of rolls into the next job or jobs, you know? So Yeah. Well, that makes perfect sense with like your style of tattooing and then, like originating with like skating and punk and all that. Cause what does every skate graphic or punk anything translate to? And that's a sticker. Oh, exactly. And, and that's exactly the people print the stickers. Um, if, if they can afford three colors, they're doing pretty well, but it's, it's like thick black lines. You can recognize it from across the room. Yeah. And it's like when I dress, draw stuff j- just for myself, like I, I tend to gravitate towards that, like, that stickery thing, or that could be on a t-shirt or that could be on like a skateboard or whatever. Like the, the, I've done a lot of drawing where it's just kind of like recreating photos and it's really, really hard, but when you nail it, it feels good. Yeah. But I don't, 
I don't consider the finished product to look fun. And so like for me, when I'm drawing or designing, depending on the client and all that, like the outcome should be something that's just fun. And it should have like a, maybe a little sense of humor to it or just like exactly, it's a little light. Yeah. It's not like, oh, and this is a perfect portrait of Celine Dion. It's like, that's fuck weird you got that. It's an amazing <laughs> job. I couldn't do that because yeah. I don't get pleasure from it. But you're an insane person with a nice looking tattoo of Celine sure. Dion. Yeah. <laughs> and God, God speed to you. Yeah. So what I found, um, because I've like drawn and painted forever, um, and then being in design for 20 years, and, and Marcus, I'm interested in, in your thought in this as well, and of course, uh, Brian, but I consider tattooing to like a, a person that doesn't have a lot of experience with tattoo or, or design or whatever, I consider them to think of a tattoo, like when you show them the sketch, they think you just pulled a magic trick. They don't know totally. how you did it. Yeah. They're like, holy shit. Like I've I've seen people be presented with very basic tattoos and they lose their mind because they don't know how you did that. But when we show something that we made on the computer and everything I make starts by hand and then it, it finds its way on the computer. Sure. It. They're like, oh, what if that was blue? It's like, oh, this isn't a magic trick. This is a product. Yeah. So you're not dazzled by it and you're not fired up about it. You're already trying to change it just because you also work at a computer. Like most people that get work done by you, Brian, their workstation where they work looks very different than your workstation. Like they have a computer and they have to wear a button down shirt. They have to do whatever. Yeah. But it's 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 kind of like being in a tattoo, t- tattoo shop is kind of like going backstage when you're seeing a really cool band. And then you feel that vibe and all that. And then they show you, like, we wrote a song just for you. You're like, oh, fuck, this is the best day of my life. But that's the magic trick. What do you think? I definitely get that same response from people, you know, at yeah. lots of times. And I think that's that's part of the fun of it. Because I think now, especially with it being so out there, tattooing on TV and everything, a lot of that, I mean, that magic that, you know, yeah. is lost was something that was lost way before I got into it. But... <clears throat> Fortunately, with someone guiding me in my apprenticeship who'd, who's been at it over 20 years at the time, I've been regaled with tons of stories about how it was, you know, and yeah. and I can just understand people enough, I guess, to tell that, you know, that is part of the magic of it, you know, that people just don't know how you did that, especially even when it finally comes to the tattoo being done, you know, because they'll sometimes, you know, be super psyched by the drawing and just like, how'd you, you know, the concept or whatever, how did you get it from that to yeah. this product, like. I, you know, I couldn't even picture that myself. And I guess that's kind of, I just usually say like, that's just what we're here for. You know, that's yeah. part of the, part of the, you know, the expertise or whatever that yeah. goes into it is, is being able to take your idea and turn it into something that looks nice that you want to wear. Um, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a nice thing whenever people do still sort of feel that like magic in there, you know, they yeah. didn't know how you did that or, you know, even like you say, the setup, everything is broadcast so publicly these days, or if you have any sort of uh, like little bit of sort of uh, incentive or desire to find out about it, you can just go online, you know? Yeah, so exactly. um, it is cool when, you know, people do sort of sense that because that's what I get even sometimes still going to get tattooed by people. Yeah. Even if it's, you know, I guess the, the, the back end thing I do have a better grasp on, but just the way every person does it, like I'm sure with yourself with design, you know, like, you know, the ins and outs of how they got to that point technically, but yeah. it's just watching someone work is a whole other thing, which that's something I think that maybe it's more magical for them where we don't typically have them in the back when we're drawing, even if it's like a quick little thing or something. So yeah, you don't want them. It's not even so much your for, shoulder. Like, Hey, exactly. You know, what if the dog had wings? You're like, Hey, just Go exactly. back there. Yeah. It's not done. Go away. Cause, yeah, because even like you said about when you present something that's finished on the computer or whatever and they're right away trying to change it, if you leave this magical drawing with them or they get to show it to one of their friends or something, that that factors in immediately to what we do as well. With yeah. You know, it's the same reason I don't You make a habit of providing designs or drawings ahead of time or especially through email because, you know, when you show the person getting it, nine times out of 10, they're psyched or whatever. And it's only after their friends or expert, you know, yeah. family member with two or three tattoos, like really 
chimes in that they start questioning it and it's it's you know it's kind of it does hinder it to a degree but again just a little more experience i find helps yeah usually overcome those types of things but you'll always have people that want to change it you know sometimes it's even like they love it they get the stencil on it's great you set up and five minutes later can we do this you know and yeah I mean, that's the time to mention it, I suppose, yeah. but it, it, it's still like, <laughs> it's the same design you fell in love with. It's just like, I hope you can, you know, live with it, you know, today and tomorrow and, and 10 years and 50 years or whatever, you know, cause it's not going to change and, you know, well, the, there's only so much we can do later. Yeah. What's, I, what's your, ex- yeah. What, what's your experience, Marcus, with trying to dazzle fucking people with work that you put a lot of time into? Anytime yeah. it goes, it's the same same thing. Anytime it goes to like a communal uh, tribunal, oh, it's, just, yeah. it's like water. let's ask the staff what they think. It's like no, we're we're done. And it's the same with I wanted my family to look at it too. Yeah, I think it's like they'll look at it when you take it home. Yeah, like, buy it <laughs> and then show whoever you want. Yeah, but but it's it's funny because when I first was getting like started getting tattooed at sixteen, it was like what do you want? It's like I don't know this thing. And it's like okay, there you go. And then as as time goes on, uh, and I've been in the design world, and I have I, I take on that client role of like, I'm paying for this. I want to make sure it's great. And I also know how much it sucks when you're not given enough information. So it's like, oh, I don't know. I want a lion with a, a hand. You're like, okay, well, what do you want the hand to do? Smoking the doobie. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> now when I go uh, to a tattoo, so I'm like, Here's what I'd like. Here's some references of what I'm talking about. And here's kind of what the action or what the essence wants it to be. Here's where I want it. And I try and provide as much information yeah. so that when the drawing comes back, it's like, that's perfect. That's exactly what I was looking for. Exactly. But I also yeah. at the same time now will still say, I'll we'll go in and look at it and be like, can we just change this one little thing? I'm not too happy with the arm or whatever. And it's like, yeah, absolutely. Oh, and, and that's, I never... Like, there's a point where I definitely am, you know, I try, especially I, I say as I go on to internalize these feelings when I'm dealing with someone face to face. But, you know, generally I'll definitely, I'm more than happy to make any adjustment. Like the likelihood yeah. of me getting it bang on, no matter how close it is and however much you're in love with it, it's not very high, you know. So um, as long as I find, you know, like a more like any person, client or whatever approaches it you know, and they're not too anal or, I mean, not that even being anal is a bad thing when you're getting tattooed, you know, something on you forever, but you know, just, just like anything, there's a difference like between being at a restaurant and being like, Oh, like, you know, I find that this is like a little undercooked or something, you know, or it's just too spicy or something, you know, it's like not a huge deal. Like if you could just, you know, do something to make that right. Like, yeah. you know, you're in a good place when the person's happy to do that, or at least not to put out, especially the first or even second time around. Yeah. There gets to be a point after where it's like, just fucking order ice cream or something. Like, yeah. Or just eat at home. Yeah, Fuck. exactly. You, you like, honestly don't this, like eating here. Fuck off. And that's where it comes like, you know, I did have a, a client recently. It was his first tattoo and it was like the littlest thing, which he came in to have it touched up, which... Technically, I mean, in a couple of years, I guess, like when it settles in, it's something you would never notice, but I get that, you know? And, yeah. and then it's like, he gets a second one that day and is real picky about something that's just like so simple and really the only way you could do that, you know? And it's like, yeah. I get that maybe some people just have a hard time communicating what they want. Yeah. So it makes it harder. But at the, eventually, like you say, it's just like, maybe this just isn't for you, you know? Like yeah. good effort <laughs> or whatever, but it's just, if you're going to be that, whatever about it, it's just not going to be fun for you. And at the very end of the day, or and even at the beginning of the day, yeah. tattooing especially should just be fun, you know, and, and, you know, serious when it should be, but it should always be fun. And, uh, yeah, I, again, like I try to keep that in mind when people are picking little things apart, like I'll definitely be blunt and honest with them. Like that little change you meet, you want, it's not, it's pointless. Like, and most people, you know, I may not be that Again, you have to sort of pick the way you talk to every single person. Yeah. But, you know, most people take it well, you know, when you're like, that just won't make sense or, it, yeah. you know, that change is just like, as soon as it heals, it's going to be the exact same, you know? So why don't we just do this? And most of them, you know, they're like, okay, you know, and if they don't, it's just like, all right, then I'll change it. And if I have to change it one more time after, like, you'll just have to find someone else to do it, you know? And, 
fortunately that seldom happens. So when yeah. it does happen, it's it's not it's not a big deal, you know. So, yeah, yeah, and there's like a learning curve too for people coming in being like, oh, definitely. Like, am I allowed to say I don't like something, or can I yeah. whatever? Oh. And and it's going to be different with every artist and sure. doing like like from shop to shop or city to city. It's it's just. I don't want to look uncool and be like, oh, no, I, I actually don't want that because I don't it'd be like you tried so hard and you did the magic oh, yeah. trick in front of me. Yeah, and you yeah. made the drawing and now I'm being a dick. And and there's just that like base level of understanding. Like when you say kids will poke their head in like, hey, are you looking for for like apprentices? It's like, motherfucker, Google how to apprentice at a tattoo shop. Show up prepared. Show up with a book of drawings, yeah. you know, dress nice make an appointment so you're not like interrupting them like just try and be kind of show, respectful show, of their time show up of, in a tuxedo <coughs> which, be, which like in Step Brothers, that exactly, worked like yeah. a motherfucker yeah. pan too well pan 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 so how long have you been tattooing for i've been tattooing now about six and a half or seven years I okay s- i started my apprenticeship i i was fortunate to have a very from what I hear from lots of people, what I would consider a pretty traditional and and well done apprenticeship. Um, I started in, I guess it was around May long weekend, 2012, mm-hmm. when I started hanging out at the shop there. And pretty much immediately since I had been saving money for, you know, most of my adult life, I guess, or had a savings that more so my grandparents were de- dealing with or whatever, but yeah. I had it there. After uh, like a month or two, I was able to just hang out at the shop pretty much full time and, uh, and spend a lot of time there. So in that time then, uh, how has tech helped or make it worse for tattooers? Cause I know, um, one that I go see, she'll take pictures of where it's going on, like mm-hmm. my arm, what have you, and then do rough sketches kind of to shape it to like figure out how it's going to fit on there. Yeah. Whereas like, you know, 10 years ago, we couldn't do that. That wasn't a thing. With like an iPad, you mean? Yeah, and then just draw yeah. right on there. I, I mean, that's, it's definitely involved for sure. I, I don't, I don't use an iPad at all. I don't have one. Um, you know, my wife tattoos and, and she uses one and s- same like anything, like, you know, in the last few years, the, in like, even since slightly before my time, but it seems like in the last 10 years or so, the same with even the equipment, like machines, like rotary machines have kind of become quite popular as opposed to the traditional coil machine, which, you know, as a young one at first, I was like, oh, that's the wrong way to do it and whatever. But ultimately I've just kind of embraced that whatever gives that person the best tattoo from you, whether you have to use an iPad or you want to use paper or not have to use one or prefer to use one, I should say, or Mm -hmm. whatever, like that's great. I mean, to me, I can certainly see the benefits. I just know the way that I deal with technology is that thing's just going to be a glorified paperweight in a couple months when I choose not to (laughs) update it and it starts to run like shit and I'd smash it or something. Like, it's just like, I've, I've more so rejected it on more practical grounds, I suppose in the, maybe in the financial aspect. (laughs) Um, but you know, I mean, I use my phone to, to take pictures and trace off of, I mean, an iPad's definitely, uh, more beneficial in the size that you have to work with and everything. But Again, I, I'd say that's more so just, you know, it's a definitely a strong and, and useful tool and everything if if that's kind of the way you're inclined to do things. Yeah. I know people that use it, like you say, just to get a, a size and shape of a space and they do a quick sketch and then they'll print that out and render it on paper till that's done or there's a million ways to do it, I suppose. And like that's definitely, I would say, since I started the 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 techie or technical aspect or more hardware based thing that's really changed that I've gotten to be a part of because yeah. most other things, I mean, most of it's the same as it's always been for the last hundred or so years. But, yeah. um, that's, I guess one that I, in my few years has, has kind of come and I'm sure is only here to stay. I mean, there's, mm-hmm. you know, now it, I can see it being a useful tool, but I can see it also being a really overused and almost abused tool where yeah. it hinders drawing ability, where there are, you know, lettering masters in tattooing that put out books and books about it and develop their style and technique and do seminars and really teach people that the kind of tattooer that when you meet, they say, you know, you should give them 20 bucks because you've made so much money off of what they've given to you as a tattooer, you know? Yeah. Um, there's people like that with tribal and geometric tattoos and everything that 
now a lot of them are just making these brush kits, I guess, on like Procreate or whatever, <laughs> yeah. where it's like, you know, to me when I'm doing like a geometric or, you know, Polynesian sort of style tattoo, it's definitely what I call a bastardized version. I, I see the images, I sort of replicate it, but there's just so many different nuances and styles and meanings to all these things that realistically doing a little bit of everything and learning learning it all about everything is just it's insane. something you definitely can't do in less than 10 years, maybe in 20 more years if I'm fortunate enough to be doing it then. Um, yeah, that, I'll have learned a bit more, but now you can just get this brush where it's like, you know, basket weave pattern and it's just like a line and it's that. But, and yeah, it, it takes away from it, you know. I it think. certainly does. I mean, the like I use Procreate. Um, I don't do... I try not to like use what I would consider in my head to be like cheating shit. I'd be like, that's what I would consider those things. Yeah, know? it'd be like I, I, I use one brush and it's it's called like dry ink and it looks yeah. kind of like fat pencil pen kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but going to your point about like how some people use the iPad and all that for for sketching the the tattoos, I find any time I draw on my iPad, it takes way longer because I try to perfect it. Sure. Because you can perfect something yeah. like that, where when I draw on paper, it's way faster. I get the ideas out so much quicker. Yeah. And then I'll throw it on, like I have a little light table, and then I'll kind of fine tune yeah. it, and then I'll look at it, and then I'll sketch and just make little notes, and I'll go over it one more time with like tracing paper, and I'm like, okay, cool. Then what what I'll do from there is if I want to turn that into something, I don't know, for a shirt or whatever in my head, which I'll never fucking make, um, I'll... I'll take a photo of it and then I'll bring it into Procreate and then I'm drawing over my own drawing. Yeah. Um, and I'll only use the one brush. I won't like patterns and textures and all that kind of stuff. Cause to me, I, I couldn't do that on, on paper. And if I did, it wouldn't look perfect cause there's, you know, slight well, imperfections yeah. all over. So like when I got my tattoo from you in June and then when you were like mapping it out and just put like the piece of paper on my arm and there's like three or four tattoos to work around and you just like sketch, sketch, blah, blah, blah. And it was just really quick. And that just shows the experience of like, you know what all these little marks on the paper mean. And then when I came back and you put the, the transfer on my arm and it fit around everything like perfectly, I was like, that's just knowing what you're doing. And it's, it's faster on paper because. Yeah. For me, you know, some people yeah, maybe not. And yeah, exactly. That's, that's that's what's so interesting about it, I think. So even with clients uh, that I have now, I'll walk into meetings with a sketchbook and and just a bunch of pencils, and I'll be like, "Here are the sketch out ideas I have for your branding." Now, everyone, grab a pencil, and we're just going to make notes, and we're going to talk through it and work through it. And I've had people owning million dollar companies look at me like I'm an idiot, and then when they leave, they say. When you came in, I thought you were an idiot because you came in with a sketchbook and we're paying you a lot of money. But I never was asked my opinion in a way where I could give feedback. Yeah, get more <laughs> interactive with it. And... Which I wouldn't suggest for tattooing No, no if no, you're no. going to get a tattoo. But, but when it's people that don't, that don't know how to work with a creative person. And I'm like, well, at the end of the day, this logo, you have to be stoked on it. Yeah. So, and I've brought you three options which I think will work really well. And all we're doing is you're having a say, and then I'm going to take your notes. I'm going to kind of give you one of those as it originally was anyway, but you, you played with it a bit and graphite and pencils are free damn near. So go nuts and have fun. So, so with, with iPads and, and, and phones and all that, what is, what's a typical, client experience like for you now from like start to finish do you get people bringing in all the shit on the ipad like i want this i want this or do they come in like i know when i came in i had a list of like imagery yeah but it's funny like marcus when you described how you prepared for a tattoo that's exactly what i did right i was trying to be a good client and yeah. i it was a big list of shit and brian was like dude this is gonna be way too much stuff for this thing i was like oh please this is just like a buffet to pull from if you're trying to fill gaps or whatever yeah but this is just all the shit I like, and now I don't want to interfere beyond providing a basic menu, and then you do whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. And and what he did with Red, and is exactly and more what I was hoping for, but I I didn't want to come in with, like I came in with a creature skateboard yeah, ad yeah. 
that I, I, I ripped out of a thrasher like 15 years ago. I'm like, one day I want to get a tattoo like this. And sure. then Brian made it happen and, and beyond. So do you get a lot of people bringing in photos of tattoos or do you still get a decent amount of people just, you know, going in with trust? Um, it, yeah, it, it kind of like runs the whole gamut, really. People will definitely bring in, you know, I, like typically now they're just looking – People will search for pictures of tattoos that they like. Yeah. They're, they're, you know, getting basically other people's tattoos a lot of the time yeah. or, or starting with that, you know. Um, people do often also, though, bring in references or notes or sketches that they've done. I did a really fun one just on Tuesday, I think, or mm-hmm. Monday that it was this girl who's, you know, a you know, bit of an artist artist, I suppose that she had this little sketch in her notebook and all I really had to do was tone it down a little cause it was, you know, just like anyone sketching with a ballpoint pen would get really into it. And, yeah. and she was get totally fine and it. understood it. I was like, just need to tidy it up and simplify it a tiny bit. And it was great, you know, and she was just like, yeah, that's great. Like, this is just my idea. Um, yeah. I think it really just depends tattoo to, you know, job to job really. Um, but I do think coming in somewhat prepared, like even when I was starting to get tattooed, when I would book appointments online or with people from out of town or something, you know, they'd often, you know, what do you want? Like include some reference photos, tell me where it's going, roughly how big and what your budget is, you know? Yeah. And, and that's pretty much exactly what you would have brought me. Maybe, like you said, a few more ideas, but when you're open to some of the ideas, not making it to the design, that's perfect. You know, I, I try yeah. to tell people don't, don't come with like 20 <clears throat> pictures that, you know, you want something from each one. But, you know, a handful of reference ideas, even if it's just like, I just want a rose, you know, and here's a handful of roses that I like, you know, yeah. it's, it just gives you a good sort of idea about what they're interested in. And yeah, I think it depends, like, again, like you say, every person, every t- design is, is so different, which is part of what makes it so fun and interesting is that you're doing the same thing all the time, but it's never the same thing, really. Um, the experience, yeah. the interaction is always different and, and yeah, it's just a fun way to to go about it with people like that. Well, we, Marks and I will get it too. Um, and kind of that, like bringing in a bunch of examples and like, can you put this here and put this here and then mix, mix, mix. And yeah. just like, this isn't fucking AIDS quilt. Like <laughs> we're just trying to make a nice thing for you. You bring in a patch of everything from all over yeah. but by combining every food you like and put it in a blender. It's going to taste like shit. Like just cause you like it, in different contexts doesn't mean it should go together. Mm-hmm. But that's a hard thing for people in design, I imagine, with, with tattooing as well, to give up that. But yeah. no, I want, you know, the chipmunk wearing the hat riding in a tank that has my grandfather's birthday and also the year I graduated high school. It's like, dude, you're... You're, you're getting four tattoos in one here. Yeah, And yeah. it's just like, most of the time you can tell it's someone's first time around, which is yeah. fine, like... You know, like I said, it would be foolish for me to expect them to come in and know exactly what's happening. And I wouldn't want that anyway, because when people come in with sleeves that know too much about it, they're more difficult to deal with because they know too much almost, you know, it's like they, they get way more involved and everything. And, and yeah, the, I had a girl, same example the other day, you know, her, like I just asked, is this your first one after a few minutes with her? Just because, um, we didn't actually end up tattooing or anything. She was just talking about it, but it was, you know an infinity symbol, which is a fine design or whatever. Like I don't have anything against those, but then it's like with a feather in the middle and the design she showed me was a decent enough size one. And it had like mom on one side and dad in the other, but she, you know, (laughs) it was like, it was the design would have been four or five inches. So everything could fit in there nicely. But then she's like, actually I want mom and dad on this side. And then I want the feather and I want my boyfriend's name on this side, but I want it in a way that's hard to read his name. Always get and a then, boyfriend's name. And then I want this like word that goes with my religion underneath here. And I was like, to me, Jesus you're getting Christ. three different tattoos. I was like, it's your, is it your first one or you don't have many or whatever? Like no judgment really. It's, yeah. it's just, just to make sure that you know, you're not someone with 50 tattoos like this that 50 tattooers had to deal with. <laughs> yeah. Um, cause no one's going to do it again on you. You know, you're yeah. going to have to go somewhere else or, or whatever. Um, is there a term that the tattooist would call that? Cause uh, in my head, the first reaction is the Homer car, <laughs> which is like everything in one. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you could, yeah, it's, uh, I wouldn't, I never probably tried to, to name it or anything, but you know, um, my wife's great. She just uses the phrase. It's like trying to cram 
10 pounds of shit in a five, five pound, pound bag, bag you know, yeah. it's, yeah. but I get that where it's like a lot of people are just so anxious and nervous and afraid, you know, of what's coming up. They don't even know. And yeah. most of them are just like, oh, that's it. Like when it comes to the pain or whatever of it, you know, the commitment and, and, uh, Marks is leaving. Yeah. Fuck. He's so mad. And, uh, but yeah, like people just picture at first, on average, you know, even though they've had, and I think that's the thing is by the time they finally psych themselves up to getting this first tattoo, they've gone between this idea and this idea and this idea. And then they're like, well, yep. why don't I just get all of them, you know? And, and I yep. won't have to get another one. And it's like, trust me, like you're going to be back just like 80% of the people are, you know, in a very short amount of time, because now that you've broken the ice, all you got to do is save up a few more dollars, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, you know, I mean, those are Oftentimes, like the better you handle those guys to a degree, the sooner they turn into clients that trust you more and more because, you know, you do it with a bit of patience and everything and some expertise and a little finesse or whatever, and they love what you show them and it reads well. And, you know, I think when people just see all their ideas jammed together, they realize it doesn't look that great, you know? Yeah. Um, And when they see something that's nice, you know, and they, they get a little bit of that trust in you and... And it leads, you know, like I say, that opens doors to better designs, more tattoos, and, yeah. and and then just understanding the process a bit more where it's like, you know, I've got all the time in the world to get these other ideas. You know, I don't have to get them all now. And if I do, generally all the ideas can be done each, you know, two, three inches across or something. So it's yeah. like, why don't you just get, we'll do all three of them tomorrow or something. You know, yeah. you can do this one here and this one and you get them all and they look nice and you're all balanced out and everything. And, yeah. or if you really want, we can jam it all together and, and that's fine, you know, like, and then you can not come back. Yeah. I or, mean, or you or can come you back can. when you want a, a cleaner idea. Yeah. yeah. And, I mean, sometimes those people just keep coming back for those tattoos, you know, and it's like, I guess, you know, like I just got to move now or something, but, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's crazy how many, like I had my suspicions, but it's, it's crazy how many parallels I'm hearing between, what we do, like the graphic design and, and the tattoo, yeah. which is what I find with the tattoo stuff, like the people that get, that I know that get tattoos that mean stuff to them. Like I intentionally get nothing I get means anything. Well, because I want. What about your the forearm one that you just got? Oh, that's just calling my wife the devil. <laughs> that's just a fun it's joke. Meaningless. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's not actually the devil. <laughs> time to time, but. But like just the, I want an idea and then I want to find the correct artist that has a cool style that, that I can picture like yeah. what I've seen that they can do. I think they're going to kill this and they can't screw it up because it doesn't mean anything to me. All I want is a sweet picture. Yeah. Like, like, like in my house, I would, like my wife puts up photos of the kids and all that. I would, you know, the kids are cool and all we see them all day every day i put like art everywhere because i just want to see cool shit all the time yeah or even just like buying t-shirts or anything you should have this just like this little touch of something that that i wasn't expecting and that was fun to see um so i try and do that i'm not sure if you do the this as well marcus but i find um doing a proper kickoff with a client and getting personal you're gonna get real reactions out of them. You're going to get real ideas. You're going to kill that shell of like, we're all professional here. Like I've had people cry in kickoff meetings because they've exposed stuff that they didn't realize about themselves. And the project went awesome because then they're like, wow, that was like, you really heard me. Yeah. It's like only, only when I really hear you, can I make you something correct? Because I'm not decorating your shit. I'm trying to give you something that you're going to be proud of. Yeah, And so do you find you try and do that and <clears throat> some people just can't, aren't into it or like people that are, <clears throat> sorry, I'm coughing like You're an idiot today. Oh, this is real emotional. Um, I think what I'm trying to ask is, do you find the easier clients to be the ones that you have to get personal with or the ones that just want a sticker on them? Um, or more, I mean, gr- I don't more think gratifying, I don't know, easier, more difficult, more <laughs> rewarding maybe. Yeah. I mean, I suppose it's just, you know, it's rewarding when it's a mostly fluid sort of easygoing interaction with them. And that yeah. could be someone that just wants to pick something off the wall or 
it could be someone that comes in with a few different ideas, you know, and it's like, you know, this is what I want. This is my concept. I like this, this and whatever. And it's like, okay, give me a minute. And you sit back and draw it. And I think like, you know, nailing it and, and they're out the door in 10 more minutes. It's just yeah. like, it feels awesome because it was just like, to me, that's kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm no means any sort of like master or, or, or fantastic tattooer or anything, but it's, it, it makes you feel like you're doing a good job at it when it goes that well. And it yeah. doesn't really matter what they want, I guess, as long as the whole sort of process moves smoothly. Yeah. So, so when, what would be your, your ideal client interaction from beginning to end? Um, I find that just having someone kind of hit you up, it seems like it happens often enough with people coming from out of town. Like people don't come exclusively for me out of town or anything, but sometimes people are coming to the island and they look you up and they're like, I saw your stuff. I, you know, we consider people like that to be more like collector type yeah. people that, you know, they know what they're into and they just, just like you say about getting nice artwork for the walls or like skateboard collection or something like that. It's like, you find an artist whose work you like or a style you like. And by getting into this, you learn about this person and this one and this one. And they're like, I yeah. just want to pick a piece of your flash or something, you know? Yeah. It happens probably more so when I go to conventions, like where I was just oh, in yeah, totally. a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, they'll post my a picture that I send them that I want them to put on the website. And that links to my Instagram, which for the most part, I, I put the stuff that I'm best at that I want, not necessarily just for the people when I travel, but for when I'm traveling and people are expecting drawings on top of the drawings I'm doing at home or booked exclusively during the weekend at the convention where it's yeah. like, if I'm drawing anything, it's going to have to be like this. So I, for, I showcase those types of tattoos, Yeah, you know, because I can draw it quickly and well, I don't have to spend a week researching it and learning yeah. the ins and outs of it so that it turns out okay, which I'm more than happy to do at home. But when I travel, it's a little tougher. So I do get that enough where it's like, okay, I've, you know, I'm whatever, so I'm going to be at the convention and, you know, they've typically, when once I see them, they've got a handful or more tattoos from people in the area or other people that visit that convention year after year in the similar style and they've just grown to like that. And, you know, they're like, okay, I see you're coming. I've not been tattooed or I have been by you and I just want another one or one from you and then yeah. I'll move on to the next artist. It's It's quite flattering, especially when you when someone approaches you that way, which is the way that I try to approach the people that I want to get tattooed by, like, I saw your work, I love it, I just want to pick a design that you want to have fun doing, you know? Yeah. And that's typically, not typically what I get most of the time, but especially at conventions, you know, because people have a bit of an idea how those work, especially, again, those collector type clients that, you know, I just, they're going to go and get tattooed by four or five different people that weekend because they're all from out of town and they're all going to get traditional tattoos from these guys or they're all going to go get, yeah. you know, I mean, it seems to be more the case with the traditional stuff because it's quicker and cheaper maybe than like, you're not going to see someone probably go and get five portraits at a convention <laughs> because that's like a set, yeah. like half a day thing and it takes a lot out of you and the tattooers don't typically do that many, you know, but yeah. like the guys I do conventions with will do 10 tattoos a day, you know, and you'll see the same person at the booth all weekend because they're getting one from that person and then them and then them and then you get to maybe yeah. tattoo them or, you know, or you send them to people if you've tattooed them before, like, oh, this person's not been at the show before, get one from them, you know, like if you're booked. And yeah, that's how I started getting booked at shows was working with people that were busy and being new from out of town and, oh, get one from Brian, you know. And, yeah. and now it's, you know, something I can kind of do the same with after I've visited places enough times where no one wants to get tattooed anymore by me, you know, and yeah. that they want something new or whatever, so. With with the similarities between uh, the industries, mm -hmm. so both Matt and myself, we get references like yourself, and then, but the difference is when we do the work, we're alone or not touching the client's body part. Sure. Whereas your work session is very close and intimate. Mm -hmm. um, I know when I'm getting work done, like I have about 20 minutes of talking and then I don't want to talk anymore. It's like, I don't find, like I'm usually like, I'm just going to lay here and actually try and fall asleep. When you're getting tattooed. Yeah. yeah. And I yeah. was always wonder if, if tattooists prefer to have a, a conversation the entire time that they get bored or is it something that like, Oh no, just, you know, <laughs> conversation is great, but I'm in my element. Don't talk to me. Yeah. It's I, distracting. 
for me, I, I do, I find typically when I'm tattooing, especially when I'm doing the outline, I try not to actually talk at least when I'm actively tattooing because it's just, just it distracts me even if I'm the one ta- talking right. you know, and tattooing and it's like, I can't focus even just doing something simple like talking or, or thinking about what you're saying and giving you an actual answer or something. So I do, if I think about it or if it's going to be a longer one, maybe I, I try to brace people for that, but yeah. That's just me. I know some tattooers that never shut the hell up, you know, and yeah. I'm sure the clients are probably like, don't you just want to stop talking and like focus <laughs> on what you're doing, you know? But um, again, I, I, again, I generally fancy myself as someone that doesn't tattoo and talk a whole lot, yeah. but then I'll, you know, have a random client that I would never in a million years, like just try to think of or think that I would strike up a conversation with anyway. And then you start talking about who knows what and, you know, the next thing you know, it's like two hours and you're just like, oh, well, okay. Like we talked the whole time. That doesn't usually happen and your tattoo turned out all right. So there we yeah. go. It's an interesting uh, intimacy but, with a mm-hmm. stranger potentially that, you know, if, if you're in a scenario or a client is and they're uncomfortable with that immediate death, so they might feel inclined to have to talk yeah. to keep that open, not feel comfortable just to say nothing. Like sure. like a long-term relationship where you can just say nothing and, and you're fine. Yeah, we could talk or not talk about anything. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's it's a, it's an interesting uh, workspace because, yeah, I don't know any other industries that are like that where it's that intimate where the client or the patient isn't knocked out yeah. sure. and doing work. Yeah, right? yeah I mean, that's, that's right. That's definitely... Like a dentist. I guess I do think about that from time to time. I mean, I definitely do when it's like, I mean, I've been tattooing this guy for three hours and all I said to him was, how's it going? You know, it's like, yeah. you know, I'll usually click in and be like, it seems awkward even at that point announcing it, but it's like, I'm not like a dick or anything. Like I just don't talk a lot. And most people, whether they're just being nice or whatever, they're like, oh, it's okay. I don't, I'm fine just chilling here. You know, yeah. I do sometimes kind of feel not bad. I mean, I didn't tell them to come into the shop, you know, but it's like three, four hours just lay in there. I mean, we got stuff to look at on the ceiling, I suppose, yeah. but still it's just like, man, this has got to be shitty, you know, like just sitting in a chair like this for like five hours. Fortunately, I don't do a lot of sittings like that. Most of my yeah. tattoos only take 20 or 30 minutes, I think with mostly doing little walk-ins and stuff. But, you know, those are the ones that I do tend to chat with more because my general banter is you know, done after the tattoos finished with those short guys, you know, so yeah. that works. And I think it sets a lot of people at ease that are, especially first timers are not as familiar with Nervous it all. To, yeah. You just sort of chat with them and then, you know, you're just finished talking about the weather and then it's done and they're like, Oh, like, wow. You know? Yeah. Then after you get a few tattoos and then you're like, okay, the one I'm getting today should, it's probably about a four to six hour tattoo. Like I'm not even going to pretend to make small talk for six hours because that's just annoying. And, sure. and also like, like, like drawing and stuff. Like I, I get lost in it when I draw, yeah. like my wife will be like, oh, blah, blah. I'm like, what? Like I, sorry, I was, I was drawing a finger and I just wanted to do it right. And it's, it's just that like, it's easy to tune out for me anyway, just the, whatever's going on. But it's funny with design. Cause I've had clients, I don't know about Marcus, if you've had this as well, I've had clients be like, awesome. I want to come in and I want to sit beside you while you design it. They're like, I'm just really curious how it works. And I've never had that, nor would I ever want that to happen. Yeah. <laughs> and so I told them, okay, but just just to be totally clear, my hourly rate doubles when you do that. Sure. And they say, why? And like, because it's going to take twice as long and I'm going to have to spend all day with you. And then after you leave, I'm going to have to go and finish the work anyway. And I was like, also, I'm not, I'm not curious about your input or question on every little decision I'm making. Cause a lot of the decisions, like it's a sketch. A lot of the decisions you're making, you're chucking out anyway. Exactly. Yeah. And I don't want you to remember something stupid that I accidentally put there an hour ago and be like, what if you put that little square back in there? It's like, nope. It's like, no, It'd that's like, why it's not here now. Be like, and can I just see what it would look like? And I hate when people say that. It'd be yeah. like, open up your imaginarium and fucking picture it now. Cause that's as close as you're getting. Cause it's a dumb idea. Be like, you know, what it's going to look like. I don't want to show it to you because you're going to want it and oh. it's going to be bad. How often does this happen to you? It's happened probably three times, maybe more. But like, <laughs> like, like doing beer labels and stuff, I've had it a few times where like we've worked on a few and we kind of have a style. They're like, can we just come in and watch you make it? 
And I say, no, because my day isn't just this. It's answering emails and it's, I have a meeting and I had like, it's in your mind, I'm just spending all day drawing your beer label where it's going to take me three days because I, over three days, I get one day in there to work on it. So it's, you're probably going to feel like you're getting ripped off because it's like, well, we're paying you good money. It's like, well, so is everybody else, but everybody wants shit at different times, which is why often so many designers and, and tattoo artists work at night, get all their sketches done for the yeah. next day, work on stuff because f- no phone, no clients, no every, everyone can fuck off because I just have to get my work done. Exactly. Um, but, but it's just they – I'm also sensitive to the fact that they want to see how the magic trick works. It's like, I can show you, but you won't be able to do it. Yeah. Like, it's not like, eh, and is this your card? Because it's like... Magician's code. Yeah, it's like, imagine having to make that card. It'd be like, how do you make a playing card? It'd be fucking impossible. It's, you're like, you have to have all the equipment, and you have to know how pulp works, and you have to, like, squish it and put a picture. Like, it's it, it's it, not making it appear. It's creating the card. The The step down from that is when somebody would ask for the source file. Yeah. In case they want to make some changes. Yep. It'd be, can you just send me the sketch afterwards and I'll just tweak it a bit myself and then send it back and you can tattoo it. <laughs> like, no. Uh-huh. Do you ever get that when people... <laughs> hope, like people want the sketch. Can I take for, the sketch home just to mark it up and bring it back? I mean, yeah, I just say no. You know, because yeah. I mean, you've, you know, every possible result of that action has happened and... Yeah. Most of them, you know, it's, they're fine with it or whatever. It's like, can I take this? You know, it's like, no, because... You know, you're just going to change it like crazy or you're not going to come back with it. And even though it only took two minutes to draw or you're going to take it to this guy who's going to do it for less, you yeah. know, and, and whatever. But it's also like, like you don't own it yet. Sure. Like you own That's, it when yeah. it's on your body. I've done that like to the degree where some people are really fussy and I just don't care anymore. And I'm like, you can buy the drawing off of me and do whatever you want with it, you know? like Yeah whether I do it like that or change it or take your notes or whatever is irrelevant, I guess. Like if you're going to be like that pushy about it, like you're going to pay for the time at least. But I just try really hard to not make a habit of that. And I think most people are fairly understanding it. Again, it's just one of those things that people are curious about. And um, yeah, you know, like, like I said, even when we have a quick little drawing, you know, they can poke their head over the counter and leer at you or whatever but <laughs> even when you just know that's happening you're spending more time like fuck off than you are like drawing yeah. and it's just same same reason i don't try to take on you know anything bigger than hand sized as a walk-in that i have to do a custom drawing for because yeah it's going to take an hour or two to draw anyway yeah where even if there's not a lot of people coming in that's something that maybe only take half an hour at home or whatever you know i mean well, that's one thing i think a lot of people don't realize too is when they come in and they make their appointment and they have the meeting you put down they put down the fifty dollar deposit that doesn't pay for shit like if you got to draw for two hours like you're not working for twenty five dollars an hour it's just that holds your spot for that day like there's a lot of stuff happening behind the scenes after the consultation that 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 is the you know in a way the magic trick is that i can take all this information and i can go voila and is this your card kind of thing and like with design, I, I find a lot of people, like what I hear a lot from clients, and you probably hear it too, too is to go, oh, this should just take you five minutes. I was like, what, what good thing can you do besides like making toast that only, that takes less than five minutes? Like, oh, just, it should just take you five minutes. You probably won't even have to bill for this one. I've heard that before. I've never, like, I don't oh, think I've mother- heard that one, but yeah. um, definitely... I can appreciate that. And, you know, definitely like, I mean, I had a girl come in the other day, like, you know, we just want to get a couple of small tattoos and her, you know, the boyfriend wants like a web on his elbow, which is takes 45 minutes to draw it on. And then an hour and a half to tattoo it or something or yeah. two hours. And then she wants just a couple small ones when that's actually like three tattoos this big, you know, yeah. softball size or whatever. And it's just, you know, and then you're the dick that's like, well, when I called yesterday, you said you had walk-in time. And it's like, well, you know, we only say that on the phone because we want people to come in. You know, it's like, yeah, we do have walk-in time. But when you lie to me and you say you just want a couple small tattoos and you actually want five huge tattoos, like, yeah, like, don't don't make me the bad guy, I guess, you know. <laughs> and, and like, you're definitely, yeah, you know, it's definitely not just going to take 
20 minutes or something like, yeah. I don't know, MTV makes you think it will or whatever. But And I, th- I think there's, it's worth discussing as well uh, where the costs of the tattoo go to. And it's not just that time that's just spent tattooing. It's, it's sure. everything up before the prep. And everything that goes into it, plus the experience that you have is, is and black rubber gloves. They're not free. Ooh, you got to get black. We're ones. just talking about that. We hate <laughs> we hate the black ones. <laughs> we and but uh, yeah, that's uh, that's a big part of it. You know, I mean, one thing I typically say when someone has an issue about the price on a quick tattoo, especially which is generally where they have it, because you save money getting something that takes a couple hours, if you ask me, um, is you know, like you're not paying for the minutes, you're paying for the years, you're paying mm-hmm. for the, my ability to not have you uncomfortable or in pain for an hour when I can do that tattoo in 30 minutes or something yeah. like that. And <clears throat> yeah, again, some people appreciate that sort of output a different way or whatever, but yeah, definitely there's a lot that goes into it. I mean, the easiest way to break it down is that you're paying just for the amount of time it takes to get the tattoo or buy the piece yeah. and, you know, something like that big should cost this much where, you know, like you say, there could be collectively, even though you jump between a few different projects and you're making dinner and you're going to a movie with your girl or whatever, you know, yeah. it's like all this time you couldn't, if you wanted me to charge for everything, you wouldn't be able to afford it, you know, because, yeah. Or the tattoo would be free and all the time is what costs like $100 for me to sit at my desk at home yeah. and, and just draw, you know, where it's like, or we can make it like I'm a really nice guy and I charge you a fair, reasonable rate for this luxury item that you don't need. And uh, and I do all the back end work for free. And I learned yeah. how to do this for free and and didn't get paid for a year and, you know, lived off of savings or worked a night job or whatever most apprentices have to do. Yeah. And uh, scrimped and saved for a few years so that, you know, sure, $150 an hour might seem like an insane amount of money, which really, if you ask me, like $500 or $1,000 for a pair of shoes you might wear a few times and then closet for the rest of their existence. That is anybody like, else can have, too. Yeah, and I mean... Anybody else can have that yeah, exact that's the thing too, yeah. fucking pair of true religion jeans, you look like a nightmare, <laughs> but you're only buying an image of yourself that you want to put out there, but like yeah. with every tattoo, it's like what I try to do with 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 my clients is every time I do something, I try to make it unlike anything, mm-hmm. well, just yours. Sure. And, and, and there are like tricks you lean on and just like style stuff, but it's just like at the end of the day, it's going to be yours. And it's it's... Yeah, I mean, it's um, in a lot of ways. I'd, I I really envy people like yourself that tattoo because I think it takes a lot of understanding, patience, and really a lot of kind of working seemingly for free. Because like when when you charge five hundred bucks for a tattoo, like like what you're saying, they paid for every day that brought you to the point where you could make a tattoo that they will like. Exactly. But they'll be like, oh, well, that's should only take two hours. It's like, cool. What do you want to do? It's like, well, yeah, yeah. I want to get it. I'm like, cool. We'll have a seat. Like, like it's dicking around about price is is something that design clients do all the time. And oh, yeah. the one of the biggest differences I can see in the two industries is when we ask a client, "What's your budget?" and they go, "Well, I don't want to tell you because then you'll just." Tell me that's how much it's going to cost. I was like, no, dickhead. Just tell me how much money you have because either we can help you and it'll be right around there or we can help you and you'll have a lot lot of money left over or we can't help you because you don't have enough. But in a tattoo shop, when you ask like, well, how much do you want to spend? You say about four or 500 bucks because and then you can assume, okay, they have $500 in their pocket. Yeah. Um, you're not going to do a $700 tattoo then at the end be like, you know what, that's actually going to be 700 because there's a chance they don't got it. No, and I mean, that kind of thing happens where you under budget the amount of time it'll take and, you know, some people might approach it different and it's actually going to be this. Like, I might do that if it's like 50 bucks or something, which half the time it it's like, oh, it's 50 bucks. Like, I'll just bite the bullet on it, you know? And it's like, yeah. oh, you got a deal or whatever. And it's like, because the next person's going to pay... $120 for a five minute tattoo, you know, and it's like, it all balances out or whatever. But yeah. And at the end of the day, you get to draw pictures for a living and it's, yeah, it's really I good. get paid 
no matter how much, if it was 25 bucks an hour, it'd be way too much to do something as stupid as make tattoos <laughs> on people, you know? Um, so yeah. what would you consider, um, the biggest misconception about tattooing from a client standpoint? Um, I mean, people don't often say it, but I mean, <clears throat> I don't know, I guess I don't think about it from that side a whole lot, but sometimes people do say like, oh, you know, they're, they're right where it's an awesome job. It must be so awesome. It must be easy. It's yeah. definitely not easy. Um, you know, years of experience make some certain aspects of it seem pretty easy, but it's more so more like a habit, I guess. It's just like, yeah. you know, tying your shoes is easy and stuff, but when you start out, it's really fucking hard to do. Yeah. Um, it's just cause like I practiced a lot at it, you know, and put time into it or whatever and, yeah. and whatever. And I guess there's that. I mean, again, people do have a, a bit of an, a skewed sense as to how we spend our time outside the shop. Again, there's lots of people like uh, Gangster, whatever his name is there. Rock, Rock and G. Oh, it's yeah. Rock, rock Roll. G. Rock Roll G. Rock, rock Roll 69 He's a rock or whatever. Roll. <laughs> um, you know, who do probably spend more time at the, like, Coke buffet at the yeah. fancy nightclub than they do at the at their drawing table and stuff, which is clear by the tattoo that we saw, you know. <laughs> um, <clears throat> when really, I mean, for myself, I mean, you know, I'm – married my wife tattoos as well we're you know in our 30s and whatever so we just like go to work and then we come home and we watch tv or sit down and draw for our clients the next day or yeah. paint flash when we have a few free minutes and and whatever and and you know just most of it's really like especially ourselves like just like i'll sit there on instagram or something but i'm i mean sure i'm just doing what everyone else does and like killing time or wasting time or whatever but to a degree it's a bit of you know research looking like even if it's just scrolling past something it's like oh that's a cool thing like someone may benefit from me looking at that yeah which I try not to lean on a whole lot but I mean you know all the all the stuff that kind of goes into it behind the scenes is you know traveling taking time off all the important stuff that you know you know doing it tomorrow as opposed to right now is just yeah it's just the way it has to be to make it the best for you you know I guess maybe seeing, like, I can really only speak to myself and the people that I work with, who I think all collectively really care about our clients and stuff. Like, they a lot of people do think that we are in 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 it to like tattoo celebrities and whatever because there are yeah. people that do that. But I think most down to earth, like, friendly neighborhood, you know, tattoo guy or girl is is really just you know happy to make you happy and. You know, when you talk about budget, like I'd rather leave a few bucks in your pocket, you know, so you could come back or yeah. so that you're happy and you're not like, you know, being broke after getting tattooed is only, it's going to take away from the experience of having the new fun tattoo that you're all psyched about. It's like, fuck, it's cool, but now I have no money, you know, it's like, yeah. I think just maybe that most of us are just like down to earth, normal people, you know? Just want to make cool shit. Yeah. Just like, this is just where I fit in, you know, like, cause like all you guys that are like, like, you know, gawking at us thinking that we're like some special thing. It's like, cause you guys like made fun of us when we were in high school and whatever. And now we have to yeah. hang out with a bunch of other losers that just like <laughs> got by by drawing and, and listening to like offensive music and, yeah. and, uh, you know, swearing all day. Like, you know, it that works out perfect. Now. Exactly. Yeah. It's just like the shitty times at the beginning that you had an awesome time during like, yeah. and not just them, you know, like, but you know, it's like, <clears throat> we're just, you know, like kids forever now or whatever, you know, I guess yeah. like to a degree and, and whatever, and, and not, not anything that special, really just somebody that works hard at, at what we do and stuff, you know, it, like you said, it, it seems like magic and everything when you present it, but it's really just like magic is just like what happens when someone that really cares about something spends a lot of time doing that thing, I think, you know, yeah. that's what you get out of it is like, even sometimes I surprise myself where it's like, how the fuck did that happen? You know, it's like, <laughs> Shit. <laughs> it's actually pretty good. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's, I, I know, we don't want to do like five episodes on tattooing because sure, I have so yeah. many questions, but. Um, do we want to save some for part two? Oh, there you go. Yeah, we'll do, we'll do tattoo. <laughs> that's fun. Um, <laughs> so I'm just running through all my st stupid questions because yeah. like. I'm a preparation fiend. Yeah. 
Your preparation H. Hey, <laughs> hamburger. Preparation hamburger. Um, I guess, like, if if you could open the perfect... Well, like, I think about this all the time with, with what I do and just, like, if you could open the perfect shop in, like, the perfect city with, like, it's a given that the crew that you, you bring in is just, like, good buddies. Like, it's likely people you work with now and people mm-hmm. you worked with in the past and whatever. Like, like what would that look like? Would it be any different than the majority of tattoo shops? Because they all have a similar <clears throat> vibe. There are some that are kind of a little cheesier. Yeah. Um, the ones I don't trust are the ones that have, like, vinyl signs. I like hand-painted shit because yeah. it, it's, it's just inherently everything inside is hand-done. I like that kind of raw yeah, vibe like to those, it. Yeah, those types of things, like, on the surface for sure. I mean, I know definitely some great shops that have vinyl decals and stuff. It's, yeah. Sometimes it's just a matter of what you've got to start out with. But ultimately it would be, I mean, I, I think fortunately now, because before I started at Government Street, <clears throat> I was sort of feeling a little, and granted I was commuting from Newmarket to Toronto, so that's like over an hour drive each way. Yeah. Getting a little burnt out with that and and just the sheer volume of like all the tattoos all the time, which is great for your bank, but it really does burn you out to the point yeah. where you're just kind of over it at you know, a certain, like right around this time of every year, it seems, yeah. you know, like right when it starts to slow down, which is good. But I mean, oh, realistically, I would just say something, I guess, you know, you can only really experience it by coming into Government Street, but there are shops like that all over where it's just, you know, a, a vibe with a bunch of people that get along well, mainly like I didn't know most of these guys before I started working there <laughs> other than having met them maybe a couple times. But I think just, you know, having a few people around that sort of care about it to the same degree where, you know, you could be into totally different music and be completely different generations. You know, like some of the guys I work with now are, you know, 10, 15 years, my senior been tattooing, you know, longer than that even. And, and listen to totally different music and stuff, but because we all care so much about the same thing, it's the strongest thing, especially when we're at work that brings us all together, you know? Yeah. So I guess, I mean, a place like that where it's, you know, it's friendly, it's open to people that aren't astute collectors. It's, you know, the, the lay person can just walk in and, and be like, I just want this little date or whatever, you know? And it's like people that are just psyched to do that would be, yeah. you know, I, I mean, before I was there, like, I guess I sort of touched on a second ago at government street, it was like, I was starting to think like, maybe I'd rather do this on my own than where I was at just because there were things that were kind of like, Oh, I I don't know where else I'd go in this whole city that is actually looking for someone that are the couple places that I'd be into. Like there is like the sister shop of government street in Toronto, the Pearl and a couple others that, you know, my boss and coworkers worked for before and stuff where those are places where I could see myself going to or setting up a shop based around. But yeah. now that I'm there, the idea of doing that is just so far in the back of my mind where where I'm at is my ideal shop, basically. Yeah. Like that's all right. There, I know that it's very easy, especially in tattooing, and I see it all the time with people just hopping where it's like, this is where I want to be. And then it's like they work there. And like, sure, I have issues most days with most of the people I work with and everybody for sure at some point does stuff just like interacting with any human in any capacity will do like gets to you, you know, but at the end of the day, I think that where I'm at and who I'm working with is exactly where I'd want to do it. Like I couldn't imagine doing it better than that. Yeah. Um, you know, I, that was something that my teacher taught me a lot when I was like, he really grounded in my head was, you know, get out there, do guest spots and work with other people and visit and travel and, take in every single thing that works and more importantly, every single thing that doesn't work from all these places, because even the best shops, like I say, are going to have issues and stuff, but yeah. some of the worst ones will have some really great idea about how they hang their drawing paper roll up or something yeah. like every little aspect that, you know, when it comes your time 20 years down the road to do your thing, you'll have it the way that you want it, you know, where you're happiest to be and and to work and, and offering the best work that you can to, to the people and stuff. Well, but yeah, man, I should have been a tattoo artist. 
fucking computers. Oh, you still got time. There's time, yeah. man. I used to want There's... to be a graphic designer, so. Oh, don't do it. <laughs> I sense a movie idea. Hey, yeah, a real freak, freaky, freaky Friday. Friday. Hey. Hey. <laughs> I'll be Lindsay Lohan, and you can Ooh. too. I want to or be no, Jamie Lee, Jamie Lee Curtis. Curtis. What the fuck? I can't think of her you, without thinking. You that. think of Parent Trap? I am. And Lindsay Lohan's. Yep. Yeah. But I can't think of uh, Jamie Lee Curtis anymore without thinking of Saturday Night Live when they did her. <laughs> Kristen Wiig was acting like her. It was like that Activia yogurt that's like with all the, <laughs> oh, the whatever. And she, she's just like Probiotics. slowly like shitting herself. She's like, oh, oh, there's another one. Oh, oh, oh. So yeah, <laughs> entire career sullied by somebody's impression of her. Um, cool. Well, uh, I think we'll take a quick break. And then come back, play a quick game, and, and let you go. Sure, yeah. Cool, man. That's awesome. All right. just had a separate podcast off air um we'll definitely have brian back if he's uh enjoying his time here because sure, uh you got a lot to share man you know a lot of shit <laughs> and uh you can hang out which is cool um now we want to help you now we know it's hard to decide what to get for a tattoo uh marcus if you could get a tattoo tomorrow what would it be uh medusa head on, on my face shaft oh, right yeah. in the middle <laughs> No, but seriously, I was Your actually specialty. thinking of a Medusa head on my arm, and then I saw that, I was like, mm, maybe I'll wait a few months. Oh, man. <laughs> kind of well, kind of ruined the magic. Yeah, I I have a feeling people will stop thinking about Aaron Carter pretty quick, and you could be uh, free and clear. Yay. Yeah. Um, so what I found was um, any number of uh, what tattoos should I get next or my first tattoo or whatever quiz. And all of them are insane. Sure. It's like they're done by someone who has never seen a tattoo, has never got it, has never done a tattoo, but they're all fantastic. But I found the most insane one. It doesn't ask any question related to art or things you like or... What is it's, your stance on immigration? It's basically <laughs> like, would you like to build a wall or not? So... I thought as like a, a public service, we, in order to help Brian figure out his next tattoo, we'll walk him through it. So Love it. this is what tattoo should you get? And there are 10 questions. They're all as insane as the other ones and they have nothing to do with tattoos. But I did it. My oldest kid did it. We got the same answer. My wife did it. She got an, a whole other answer that was that alluded to maybe you should just get a temporary tattoo. I don't know how they arrived at this conclusion, but I, I say we'll give I just it a, get whatever it says. Yeah. I'll get it. Oh, so I've only seen one answer of like an actual picture that, that I should get. And my kid got the same one. So I don't know if they just have one. And then the other one is like, maybe you shouldn't get a tattoo. But anyway, all right, let's walk this. Yeah. Walk around through this. All right. Brian, if you were an alcoholic beverage, you'd be a glass of wine, Red Bull and vodka, a shot of whiskey, or a cosmopolitan. And some, and some of these questions, the answers they provide are not, they don't give like a rational answer. And this one's fine because it's just drinks. Yeah, it makes sense. I yeah. would say it'd have to be a shot of whiskey. Yeah. But where's a beer on here? It's too tame, it's, man. I guess now that so. people are getting face tattoos and stuff, it's like a beer is just like, I want a tattoo on my upper arm. You know, it's <laughs> like no one does that anymore. That's why I didn't realize it until like years uh, after I got it. But I have like an eagle on my right arm. And um, my dad has an eagle on his right arm, but it's like kind of one of the like the smaller kind of old school ones. Sure. And he got it on his 16th birthday in Alberta. He got it at Pat's Painless Tattoo Parlor where it's a dollar a minute. 
So I it took an a, hour. And it cost sixty bucks on his sixteenth birthday. I have. It's pretty I'm rad. Pretty sure I have a business card from that shop. Oh really? From a, an old collector. <laughs> but it's painless. Pat's got this stick figure like yeah. guy on it, and uh, it's an old collector that I tattooed when I was in Barrie. Yeah. And uh, he, from time to time, sends me a lot of his like quite extensive uh, collection of memorabilia. Yeah. As he. Uh, as he says, like nears his end and everything, and <laughs> wants someone who appreciates it to have it. Yeah. And it's the only other time I've ever heard of that tattoo. Oh. But I'll uh, I'll show you the card sometime. Yeah, that'll be awesome. Because yeah, it's a uh, pretty sure the tattoo now on my dad is just a blue smear on his arm. But sure. I, when I was growing up, it was more or less an eagle. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. When was the last time you stayed up all night to see the sunrise? A few months ago. Crazy party. Maybe once. It was very romantic in college. Does waking up before the sunrise count? Yeah. I guess technically at this point I'd have to say the last one. Yeah, that I was did my... do it years and years ago a few times, yeah. but that was right. that, the uh, exa- exact circumstances aren't listed here. So. Yeah, exactly. Uh, waking up for sunrise. A tree down. on mushrooms is not there. All right. Okay. So this is a one that I thought had the worst answers. If you found out your best friend's significant other was cheating on them, what would you do? Keep my mouth shut. Confront the cheater. I might consider blackmail because I'm fucking psychotic. Out of sight, out of mind, or drop really obvious hints to my friend. Nowhere on there does it say, tell my friend. <laughs> I suppose by association, it would have to be the last one. Exactly. And my obvious hint would be like, your girlfriend's cheating on you. <laughs> yeah, hint, hint. Also, what's the difference between one and three? Out of sight, out of mind, keep my mouth shut. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, exactly. A. Both A and C. That's why they call you the master hacker. <laughs> Planet hacked. What's a wallpaper on your phone? A picture of me and my honey? A selfie of me and my posse? We don't have a posse. We should get one for the show. A picture of my pet? Whatever the default image is. Default. You do have a default, you madman. My wife has a picture of me on it, but oh, well, on we'll hers, but I can't change it. So yeah, default. What do you got in, on yours there, Hotshot? Uh, is it your dog? I make my own wallpapers from pictures I found, and right now it's uh, somebody riding a motorcycle. Oh, That's yeah. All. There you go. That's what I do. And I have a hockey skateboards graphic that I enjoy because Anthony Van Englen is the greatest skateboarder in the history of the world. Uh, whatever default image is next. What's your go-to outfit? Jeans and a t-shirt? Something classic and polished. I know that's Marcus. Comfy sweats? I don't have one. Every situation is different. <laughs> Something trendy. How about polished sweats? Or Polish sweats. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's Polish. You get him to a high gloss. Hit the town. <laughs> All right, Brian. I'd say we'd have to go with number one. All right. Jeans and a t-shirt. Yeah. Or chinos and a t-shirt. So do you feel this is getting closer to predicting what you would get for a tattoo? Or just a collection of insane shit? I don't know. It's hard I, to tell at this point. We're just halfway through, but yeah. I think we're going to get something good. Oh, guaranteed. All right. Have you ever been fired from a job? Plenty of times. Never. It was so, sort of a mutual decision, or that's none of your business? <laughs> Never. Yeah, me neither. I thought about it because I'm, I'm typically mean to people I work with, and I don't like being told what to do, but I've never been fired. Yeah. Quit a few times, like abruptly. Yeah, I quit while being accepted for a job once they're just like you got it here's what it's going to take and i just said i have to go home and i don't want to do this ever again and they said all right (laughs) i did that when i worked at this crappy call center and well the first job out of university was for cibc like pc financial yeah and i was uh like not great with the selling people shit they didn't need refinancing mortgages for people that couldn't manage their debt anyway you know like and they could tell by listening to my phone. Like, there's a CIBC ad right now. That's actually, but uh, pretty wacky. But not, uh, you know, they could tell listening to my calls and stuff that I wasn't really that into it. And I was just like, you know, I'm like, they're like, do you like working here? And I just said no and walked out. <laughs> <laughs> no, fuck you. All right, this is a personal question. Speaking of finances, how much money is in your savings account? Savings account. Little nest egg, a couple hundred bucks in shrinking. I lent my friend some money. Hopefully, I'll get it back sometime. <laughs> um, a little nest egg. Yeah, I think that's, yeah. Nothing crazy, but. No. What's your favorite holiday? Christmas, summer <laughs> solstice, <laughs> New Year's Eve, Mardi Gras. Mardi Gras is not the a holi- holiday. It's a holiday, according to brainfall.com <laughs> or Valentine's Either Day. Either Valentine's Day. It's not a holiday. It's summer solstice? <laughs> 
I guess I'd say Christmas. Yeah, there you go. The cookies. Oh, you picked the holiday out of the five <laughs> yeah, yeah. options. Which one? Is, I guess it's just like <laughs> SAT style, you know? Well, those aren't actual holidays. Final exams are my favorite holiday. <laughs> what best describes what's in your fridge? Beer and some moldy leftovers, fresh fruit, vegetables, lots of bottled water, diet soda, frozen pizza, pints of Ben and & Jerry's and a bottle of vodka, <laughs> an art project I'm working on. I don't know what the fuck that last one is, but... I'd say it's probably a combination of the second and third one. All right. Let's go with the third one, though. Third? All right. If you had to pick one. All right. You refer to your parents as... Now, this, for me, is what I ask myself every time I get a tattoo. What do I call my parents? Mom and dad? Mommy and daddy? That's me. The parents or by their first names? Mom and dad. Yeah. I don't know how rare... I just don't understand how any of these are going to work. It'll all make sense when we reveal Brian's next tattoo. Submit. Oh, survey question. You can skip right. the survey. Nah. <laughs> Mobile lab for it. Nope. All right. And the result is Brian's <laughs> going to get a, you should get a tattoo of something temporary. You're conservative and traditional. <laughs> You're not the kind of person to follow trends. You probably prefer to be working or reading a book than out partying with your friends. So, some may call you cheap, but you're just thrifty. <laughs> Wait. See the other results. All right. You should get a tattoo of a butterfly. That's what I got. And my kid got it. <laughs> Tribal armband. Get a tattoo of a life-size python. So there are four answers for this quiz. I'm glad I didn't get the significant other ones one. Yeah. No offense, but yeah, fair it's just enough. not in our game plan. You know, Norm MacDonald says, ain't no river long enough, don't contain a bend. You know, <laughs> you don't get a significant other's name tattooed on you. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I hope that helped <laughs> with your next temporary tattoo. You really just get <laughs> vegan for, for a while. Yeah, vegan for a bit. Vegan for now. Trying it out. I did see an awesome face one recently, though, that was like vegan straight edge like big letters on this guy's face like one was here and like one was here and then the next there's like a more recent photo with a big flail and like the vegan part or the straight edge part has been covered over so now they're just one <laughs> or the other but it was God. like a, it was there oh wow that guy right there there you go vegan straight edge spider guy, web that's him on the right vx he, he okay. got like uh the handle from the flail over vegan i suppose and yeah. then the ball covers the v on his face this is the guy because i recognize his throat tattoo oh what an absolute that's before Jim. he got his throat tattoo i guess oh he's really into taking his picture of his own head oh i thought that mustache was a tattoo that's why i clicked on it oh you got vegan why are people <laughs> getting vegan tattooed on their face I'm more concerned with this one is that costanza <laughs> oh good lord there's a it is a it's like a it's college like a, age Costanza with, what would you call that on the face, Brian? A, they refer to that as a moco. It's a Polynesian traditional style of tattooing. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but this man does not look Polynesian. No. No, but he is vegan and he has uh, wrenches That's and like the, something uh, on either side of his neck. That would probably be because the vegan looks to be written in the same font that the the popular hardcore band Earth Crisis. Earth Crisis. From the, you've probably heard them from oh, the yeah. 80s and 90s yeah. and shit. And the wrenches was there. We don't smoke. We don't drink. We don't do drugs. We don't engage in promiscuous sex. Yeah. We're all about... Um, yeah. What the fuck? But yeah, they, they use the wrenches <laughs> as well for the straight edge bit. Yeah. Well, there's Moby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, he's a pioneer now. But uh, oh, it's a surprising amount of people getting vegan tattooed on their forehead. A little leaf. I did a vegan one recently, the just a little V with a little leaf coming off of it. But was it on Miley Cyrus? Because I saw she got one. I, I was looking up bad celebrity tattoos before this recording. Um, and she got on the back of her arm. She also got one that like it says like rock and roll heart on it, and her boyfriend got one that like Billy Idol has. His is actually pretty good. It's just kind of like a line little grim reaper, but they got it because there's two rock and roll folks in the 80s were in love or something like that so they got their fucking tattoos but yeah anyway well if we learned anything today it's don't go vegan don't go vegan go vegan or go home <laughs> or go vegan and go home go big and go vegan yeah so 
Um, thank you very much, Brian. This oh, was fantastic. Yeah, I really awesome. appreciate it. Yeah, really it's fun. super you. fun. We'll do another one and we'll yeah. we'll play more games because sure. uh, I have a lot more questions and I think there's just a lot more to talk about with tattooing because it's just, to me, it's one of the oldest forms of design that's still going more or less in the same form as it was. It was not super affected by technology. Like I mean, no. iPads and shit. Is, but you mentioned Starship Troopers. If you remember, they got their, laser. their matching laser <laughs> tattoos. I was just talking about that. That would... Uh... That'd be a trip. Then Casper Van Dien's getting his skull or whatever on his arm. Then fucking <laughs> Jake fight. Busey's kid. No, Jake Busey. Gary Busey's kid. The dickhead <laughs> just runs by and like pours, pours a bottle a of whiskey, whiskey on. Whiskey. He's like, ah, ah, ah. they're like, hey, buddy, I'm getting tattooed here. Like, and he just like pulls it out at that time. Yeah. And it's like just when it's it done. It just and happened stuff. to be perfectly done. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll also have to, have to come back to do a Starship Troopers episode. Oh, man. I'm going to uh, watch Starship Troopers when I get home now. Uh, yeah. You know, I still say that to my to. kids before they do something that they consider daring. And I say, what, you want to live forever? <laughs> They're like, what is that from? Like, Starship Troopers. It's from the commanding officer. <laughs> made me the man. Yeah, infantry made me the man I am today. <laughs> guy with one leg, no arms. Uh, I also think of a social... Uh, social media activism of when the girl turns, she turns and she's like, I'm doing my part. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, yeah. I made a sign. Yeah. yeah. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Uh, my cat's breast smells like cat food. So where can people find you? Exactly. Online. People can find me on... You're in your home address. Instagram. <laughs> Brian Carr Tattoos. Uh, Brian Carr Tattoos at Gmail to book an appointment or ask a question or and that's best Car with two R's. Car with two R's. Yeah. T with or tattoo with three T's. Yep. Two O's. <laughs> and um, some other letters. Yeah, but the best way always is uh, what's come always worked best is just come on down to Government Street. If if I can't sort you out, someone else surely can, and yeah, and we'll have some fun. I highly recommend it, and uh, it's just a rad shop. It's just exactly what you want a tattoo shop to be. Flash everywhere. The doorbells painted a bunch of shit inside. Yeah. Everyone's as nice as they need to be because uh not it's, too nice. It's not a dentist a office. Fucking if you don't like being treated that way, then just go away. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. uh yeah. there's we, more people right behind you. We don't read the Yelp reviews. No. <laughs> just say that. So if you've got something bad to say, we don't care. Yeah. So uh and you can check us out at Worst Design Show on Internet Things. And if you go to worstdesignshow dot com, uh we'll post all the show notes. What we do is we'll like link to your Instagram and like portfolio stuff or I'm sure your Instagram is a portfolio. Yeah. And then uh we'll post uh your email for if folks wanna you get in touch, make an appointment, and also we'll post a link to Government Street Tattoo so people can just walk the fuck down there and talk to you or one of the fine folks down there and get something done. And yeah. they also have the Get What You Get machine. Uh, just picture a gumball machine, just <clears throat> filled these plastic bubbles filled with these uh, little pieces of flash. Yeah. You don't know what it is. You put it. It's 100 bucks, which is the shop minimum, and they're all just good fun, nothing too dirty or racy, you know? No. And uh, yeah, there's, there's some good ones in there. Oh, yeah. And. S- Anything there, if you picked it, would for sure be more than what you spend on the the hundred bucks or whatever. Yeah. So if you're into getting deals, that's uh, yeah. And it's something you could potentially start, do. I suppose you but. could potentially do on your lunch break. Yeah, yeah, they're all quick, you know, pop yep. in and and yeah, they're good fun. Yeah, so check that out. And <laughs> thanks everyone for listening, Marcus. Where do you want people to find you on the internet? Uh, at Costco. Okay, go to Costco. I'm guessing by the the hot dog plate. Uh, I'll be there giving samples. Giving. Semen? Of my fist. <laughs> 12 packs. I don't know what that means. <laughs> yeah, Marcus has 12 fingers. Um, so one thing we ask um, designer, artist questions uh, at the end of the show is after all the learning and the trials, tribulations, all the work, all the successes, why do you still give a shit about tattooing? Oh, I guess, I mean, I've, I just, I don't know, love it and care a lot about it, so I, I just can't not. I um, also feel that even though I've learned a whole lot in the last, you know, seven or eight years, I I barely scratched the surface, so that's what kind of got me into it at the beginning was just seeing a picture and then finding out who did it and their story yeah. just kept me digging, you know, so every day there's something else like that that could, just keeps you kind of 
interested in it, you know, because yeah. you're, you're never at the end of it or anything, that's for sure. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, basically that. Just Once every living human is covered in tattoos, then you're done. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Then it'd be time for There's sure a baby to start somewhere. covering up some of the old ones, yeah. Somebody just had their 15th birthday. We can fucking, we can put something on there them. But uh, yeah. thanks again, Brian. That oh, was awesome. Thank you guys. Uh, yeah, super fun. Thanks everyone for listening. And remember, making pictures for a living ain't that bad. And if you think it is, then you are the worst. Goodbye. Goodbye.